Okay, hello. Welcome back to the Newcastle and Hunter Rugby League Grand Final Day. This is C-grade if you've just tuned in. And we're about to see two, two teams battle out for immortality. We're at Harker Oval, home of the Western Suburbs, Rosellas. And the two teams today, as we can see the first team running out, is Dungog, the Dungog Warriors, and they're playing the Carrington Pirates today. Let's go through the team list. Oh, sorry. Sorry, boys. Nearly forgot you there. Joining me in the commentary books today is Josh Nielsen. How are you going, Josh? Good, mate. Very good. Happy to be here. Thanks for having me, mate. No worries, mate. You got an early tip for today. Mate, uh, just going through the team list here, uh, good to see Timmy Harlow's back after uh, what... What sounded like it was a bit of a controversial sending off last week. Um, he's going to be massive today. Um, Carrington, a couple of big names there. Guys like Jason Saban and Dane Bell. Um, handy players coming off the bench, mate. It's going to be a very, very good game of footy. Um, I'm going the way of Carrington, mate. The local boys. No worries, mate. And down on the sideline today, we've got Michael Armand. How you going, Michael? Oh, very well, thank you. Give us a tip. You're not allowed to sit on the fence this time, mate. Give yeah, us a tip. Carrington Pirates. Yeah, all no the worries, way. mate. Let's Minor go Premiers. Minor Premiers. That's exactly right. Let's go through the team list. I'll go through Carrington. Joshy, you can go through Dungog. So at the back, we've got Greg Morris. He is the player to watch today. Unfortunate loss in their number nine, under-19s last week for Souths, but he's here to play the grand final. On the wings, we've got Evan Atchison and Kane Rorty. In the centres, we've got Bevan Gardner and Shane Dixon. The halves are Andrew Curry and Ben Chapman. Front row is Gareth Remage and Matt Mason. At the hooker is Jacob Watson. Second rows are Owen Daniels and Todd Antilla. 13 and captain is Warren, Tower Warren Towers. On the bench is Cody Pepperell. Trent Shelton, Matt Buttry, Matt Crossingham, Jason Saban, and Dane Bell, and their coach is Warren Towers. And for the Dungo Warriors today, we've got at fullback Lee Nevin. On the wing, Aaron Cottam. In the centres, we've got James Foote and Jackson Bell. On the other wing, we've got Hamish Evans. In the halves, Dave Taylor and Jake Clifton. Number eight, propping up the scrum is Tim Harlow, former Lakes United Premiership winner last year and uh, a phenomenal sledger too, I might add. Uh, the nine and the player to watch today for Dungog is uh, Phil Bador, crafty little hooker. Keep your eye on him today. The other props, Dave Shears. Uh, the back row, we've got Cody Warwick and Brad Smith. And the third end is Luke Ritz. On the bench, we've got Wes Nielsen, no relation. Uh, 15 is Daniel Bates. 16 is Zach Thackeray. 17, Nathan Ward. 18, Leo Connor. And 19, Terry Drinkwater. And their coach is Nathan Ward. So, boys, any tips for a first try scorer now? Mate, it's a pretty wet day out there. I'd say there's going to be a lot of uh, a lot of the boys uh, in the middle are going to be doing a lot of work early. So I'm uh, I'm tipping uh, like you said, our man to watch here for Dungog might be the nine Phil Bade, or I'd say he's going to create a bit of havoc, uh, especially on that cricket pitch, man. Mate, there's a lot of water there. Um, I think yeah, a lot of work's going to be done around the middle today. So Phil Bade for first try score. No for worries. Me. Speaking of the wet pitch, Michael's down there on the pitch. Michael, what can you tell me about the pitch? Well, well, well into the field earlier. It's pretty muddy and wet. Before it's just a giant puddle, but now it's just mud. What about a first try scorer, mate? Can you see anyone scoring the first try? Uh, from number two from Carrington Pirates, Evan Atchison. Number two, the winger. Yep. I'm going to go the opposite winger, mate. I'm going to say okay. Kane Rorty. Yep. Yep. We've got a bit of speed on the Carrington wing. I know, I know these both, very quick. Both these guys are lightning. So as we can see, we've just got the toss out in the middle. Josh, what would you do as a, as a player and a captain, I might add? <laughs> what would you do if you won? On a day like this, we've got a bit of wind out there. What would you do if you won the toss? Mate, I can't say I get the opportunity to make this decision very often. Um, I'd probably do... I'd probably do exactly what Carrington have done, mate. I'd probably use that wind in the first half. Um, I know a lot of teams like to come home with the breeze, but, uh, mate, if you can get out to a good lead, um, especially if the, you know, the pitch is a bit wet, there might not be a lot of points scored. Um, try and take a good lead with that wind while it's there, while you're fresh. So, yeah, I'd say you say do what Caro have done here. Okay, and we're underway. Kick off from Andrew Curry. Now, Carrington uh, do have the wind behind their back. So that should uh, be a bit of a, a bit of an advantage for the first oh. half. Big tackle, oh. bringing the ball back was David Shears, and, and he got, got absolutely one on the crunched. Too. We got a Carrington Pirate. He's asleep. The Pirates asleep. Michael, you're right down on the sideline. First yeah. tackle of the game. We're going to you. What can you tell me? I just see traders bolting onto the field. Did see the collision, but big, big, big result. Absolutely oh. massive. Oh my goodness. That's not good. That's not good news. There, he is asleep. He is snoring. Hopefully, hopefully it's not as bad as it looks. We'll have a look. No, we don't. We won't have a look on the replay. Even the Dungog trainers are like starting to wander out. They're even concerned for him. It's just a monster tackle. <laughs> oh, Michael, can you see a number? No, I can't. Can't see a number. I'll. I'll move around, try and get a better view, see if I can get a number. But we got, it looks like we've got uh, 
David Shears coming off from Dungog might be having a bit of a concussion test after that, so I'm guessing it might have been a head clash. That was a head clash. serious tackle. That was... Uh, Oh. Jeez, if that's anything to go by for the rest of the game, we're in for a treat here. I no, think we're calling for a stretch up. Yeah, mate, it's number eight. That's Gareth Remage. That's very unfortunate. I hope it's not as bad as what it, what we all think at this point in time and he can get back out on the field because I'd hate to see someone miss out on the whole of the grand final after the first tackle. You've just warmed up and you've had this week of just soaking up that you're in the grand final only to be down like that. That's very unfortunate. Oh, yeah, well, it doesn't look good. He, uh, he hasn't moved too much, boys. I think uh, yeah, it doesn't look too good at all there. Yeah. Big, big name player going down as well, Gareth Remage. Got him in. As we can see on our screen now, just pan to the crowd. Now, normally at a Western Rosellas game, that'd be full of cars, but today, grand final day, it's just a sea of blue. What can you tell me about that, Michael? Oh, the supporters are absolutely going berserk right up until kickoff, but when the play went down, the mood just died. They're very concerned for this fallen warrior. Well, in the D-grade game, we had a sea of red and white, and today we've got a sea of blue, so... Yeah. It's a, the, sea, the sea of red and white got... got um, who was that? That was... Karua. <laughs> they yeah, got them home, yeah. so I think the crowd will play a big factor in this, Josh. Yeah, local boys, mate. Uh, Caro, just around the corner, I'd say that there's a a uh, nice loyal fan base there, mate. But I was so impressed. I walked in. The, the noise, mate, I parked two streets over because there's no car parks. And the noise coming out of the ground, mate, it was like ANZ Stadium. It was unbelievable. So, oh. uh, mate, grand final day is always a pretty special day. And, uh, you know, um, fantastic crowd out here today. And I'd say it'll just keep building, too, into, yeah, into sort of B grade and then into A grade as well. But, no. uh, yeah, great crowd out here for the Pirates today, too. Some serious support. Much the same as when you pull up for a Knights game. It's the same sort of volume. Or a Central Newcastle game as well. <laughs> or a Central Newcastle <laughs> game at St. John. <laughs> maybe not, maybe not of, quite as Bit that. of a biased commentator, I might add. <laughs> but hey, we don't worry about that. Even though Carrington are the same colour as Central Newcastle, it, we don't worry about back that. The boys in blue and white every day. <laughs> they even got a couple of porta potties set up. That's how much we've got. That's how many people we've got here. We need the porta potties out. Okay, looks like this uh, Remage is uh, sitting up, so he's with us. He's on earth. Just probably asking where he's at right now, and yeah. he's probably thinking he's at St. John, by, yeah. to tell you the truth, with this sea of blue. That was some tackle. That was... Oh, mate. I goodness. think it was a head clash. Yeah. Shears is off as well. So both players yeah. that made the initial collision are, are off. HIA, head injury assessment for the boys before well, they go back on. Well, yeah, 15 minutes <laughs> of game time, so... Yeah. I don't think C grade are up to the HIA yet, but... Not yet. 2017, they're bringing a, that in. A I can heard. of 4X will <laughs> make the pain go away, I can tell you that. A natural painkiller. Might oh. make him feel good the next morning, but he's up. That's a good sign. Great sign. They've called for a stretcher, but he's on his feet okay, now. He's on his feet. That's good to see. Yeah, a lot of clubs to... Congratulate this player for a monstrous start to Absolutely. the game. Absolutely. Dungog supporters as well will be clapping that. It's, it's, it's great Very to see someone with an injury like that standing up and walking off the field, even though he's walking side to side and working on his, uh, inadvertently working on his left foot step. All right, so we had a weird finish to the D grade game, and now we've got a, a weird start to the C grade game. It's going so to be a special day, mate. Grand it final is. day. I can, crazy things happen on oh, grand absolutely. Final day. If I was playing for Carrington right now, I would from the bench because I wouldn't start. <laughs> I'd be lifting now. We've got something to play for now. Let's play for Gareth. Bench winger, Tom Taylor. <laughs> mate, there's no bench wingers like me. Come on, drop a high ball, go off. <laughs> Cut the oranges. That's what it's about, mate. So, Michael, it looks we're back underway. Sorry, Michael, we'll come back to you later. Dungog are working their way out of their red zone. So it's a bit of a, a fizzer there. They've just warmed up and they've just had... It probably took about five to ten minutes. Now, there might be... Josh, if you, if you were out there playing, would you go a bit cold after that? Yeah, geez, that'd be... That was a good, that was a good spell. There's Timmy Harlow taking the ball up. Great tackle. Uh, yeah, mate, it, it would be a bit of a funny one. You probably, like you say, you get uh, all pumped up and uh, first tackle, mate. Nice, uh, you know, 10-minute ten, ten break there. So the boys would have got cold, but the first team to get back into it here will, uh, will definitely benefit for sure. Yeah, a bit of a psychological thing playing with everyone's mind there. Now, Dungog spread the ball to the left there. It looked like they had a bit of a four on two, but early days in the tackle count and early, early minutes in the game, just playing it safe there as we go to Jake Clifton putting in a kick, wearing that headgear, playing it safe as well. We've got it. Well, hang Atchison. on a minute. That's not Evan Atchison. <laughs> Where is Evan Atchison? It's because I don't think that's him. 
whoever it is, he just got absolutely covered in mud. I'd be yeah. staying well away from where he just went. He well, as tackled. a winger, that's what you want because now it looks like you've yeah. done stuff. <laughs> Okay, you can so chill out for the rest of the half. Let's now. hope, he's, let's he's hope the rest of this program is right. But we've got Ian Tiller just playing the ball. Now we've got the first penalty laying in the ruck too long. Johnny Tanalu is not going to have any part of that. Of course, today our referee is John Tanalu, and our touch is uh, Will Kirkby. And who's on that side? Who's on that side, Michael? I can't quite get a view. I'm on the opposite side of the ground. Oh, it's Damien Callender. Of course. Had to look at the monitor for that one. Three very experienced officials on this game, which is what you want for a grand final. And, and one rookie commentator. And <laughs> <laughs> Oh, but he's doing a great job. As I got Shane Dixon. I hope we're getting these right because that doesn't look like Shane Dixon either, but we'll go with it anyway. Now, hopefully that's Warren Towers. Our... Well, we might have to get a team list. Michael, you might have to just do a bit of scribbling. Good play Michael, out the back. grab a pen. Quick hands. <laughs> Ooh. That looks like Shane Dixon with the headgear on. Jeez, great skills there from the fullback. Right, Dungog. We, I think we've got Dungog right. So we'll see how they can get out of their own red zone here. As Michael comes up to the box and fixes up the team list. Because we are way off. <laughs> we have got the right teams though. Yeah, I might grab this program. The program might be helping me out a little bit more. Oh, Gee, some aggressive oh, defence here from, uh, from Carrington too. The boys are everyone, really firing up. <laughs> Thanks, mate. Every, oh. Everyone up in the box is coming to assist the commentators. They know we're, we're not the most experienced, but hey, whatever help they can get. He's great set there from Carrington too. Great defensive set. <laughs> okay. They're going to start their own set on halfway. Just so, over halfway. Great so, set. So I've just been given the actual team list from Carrington. <laughs> We've got all the names right, but it's just all jumbled up. Oh, that's all right. All right, so I might have to stick this down so we can both see it. Anyway. So we've got Jacob Watson, a dummy half. Looks for runners. And he finds Gareth Remage. <laughs> <laughs> we just spoke about Gareth Remage being taken off the field for head clash, and this is Gareth Remage <laughs> making up a run here. Oh, what can you do? Carrington is met by Dungog. He's the number seven. We'll just call them by their numbers. So that's Gardner. Because they're mixing it up well around the middle of the field too, Carrington. Uh, mm. The halves are getting early touches and sort of a lot of plus one plays. Yeah, nice right. kick through there, well left by the yeah, fullback well, we, too. We've seen that a lot today. We saw a lot of kicks down that end. With the win, going dead from Digger. So it's a very hard to get a repeat set down that end. So we'll see what happens. Maybe the crossfield bomb might be the opportunities uh, on the last tackle. As we see, Dungog are going to get a seven tackle set now. So unfortunately, they're all flat-footed there. So that's not a very good start to the set. Tim Harlow taking the ball up there. Dungog are in... Oh. Dungog are all in different numbers too. That's... Damn it. Okay, so we've got yeah, through numbers the on the right edge there. Yeah, we've got number four. That is Dave Taylor making a, a dart for it. The coal train. Yeah, very <laughs> coal train coming back from England just to play this grand final. Nice bit of second phase there from the uh, from the Dungog boys. Two nice meters there after the uh, after first contact. Carrington are going to need to wrap this ball up. We've got Harlow nearly spilling it. Good Gets a good out ball back. out. We've got James Foot with the ball. He needs to get his winger on the inside. Ooh. He looks for the offload. It's play on here. He's still running. Still finally brought down eleven out from the line. So we've got Aaron Cottam with the ball. Oh, geez, he goes through. for the line. He's going to get... Oh. No, he's not getting there. Great defence from Carrington. Okay, he's... Long, got numbers out. Got oh, heaps of numbers here the, to the right. The execution was a bit oh. bad. Oh, we might That's have a knock on. defence there from Carrington too. Mm. This is throwing me off this program. What are you doing to a stun gog? Okay, here we go. Good start from both teams. They're both looking to sort of spread the ball a little bit. Uh, no one's just sort of... Keeping their cars too close to their chest. They're both going to play a bit of footy, which is good. It's, uh, it's going to be a nice open game, I think. they got the actual team list for Carrington here, and I'm looking at everyone's signatures. <laughs> and, like, it looks like this Chapman's signature is just a printed, bad handwriting printed signature. <laughs> anyway, enough about signatures. Back to the game is Carrington. They need to get some hard runners here making it out of their own 20. 
So we've got tackle one, and they are 20 out. So we'll see how they go. Looks like this is probably the big front rower. Which one? I'm not sure, but I'm going to guess Matt Mason. But it wasn't. It was the number 19, Dane Bell. Dane Bell. And uh, shout out to Dane Bell from the boys at Spitzer, Corey Baker, Big Daddy Beltron. The boys have uh, given a shout out to the big fella. Good luck today, mate. That was from the boys at Spitzer at uh, Carrington there. Oh, big nice. unit. A big unit. I'd say he ties those boats up by himself, the size of him. He's absolutely massive. There's probably a few shout outs from Dungog. They just haven't got to us yet. <laughs> oh, that's oh, off the toe. That's, that's going to be play on here. We're seeing Ooh. everything today at Harker Oval. Looks like an attempted one-on-one -on -one strip then from Gregory Morris, That's who is good. our player to watch today, Gregory Morris. Now, if my statistics are correct, Greg Morris has scored 27 Knock on tries. There Tim Harlow. It's picked up by Shane. Is that, oh, is that Shane Dixon? Is that Warren Towers? Uh, who is it? Okay, 11. I can get that. That's Remage, who we thought was unconscious but was a different person. That's Pepperell now with the ball just... Trying to spin his way out of the tackle, except he's getting tackled by a monster and Tim Harlow, who is a Lakes first grade there premier. We go. Oh, <laughs> that's not good. Timmy Harlow's had a bit of a lash out here and thrown, hopefully, an open handed slap. And John Tanalu. That was a love tap. Yeah, that was love a love tap. tap. Big Johnny here. He's not going to have a bar of that. No love tapping in this game. You, come out here. <laughs> that's how he talks. Don't you? Train with him every time. He's the funniest bloke to train with. But, hey, so we've got the <laughs> captain here. We're going to talk to Brian Chapman and Tim Harlow. Now, Tim Harlow has been in a bit of strife last week. He, he got his marching orders for a bit of descent, but lucky enough to be playing today. So hopefully he can keep a lid on things. He's a, uh, he's a bit of a hothead, old Tim. He played against him a couple of times last year, and uh, he's a great sledger. He's one of the great <laughs> sledgers I've ever, ever played against and uh, given the boys plenty of curry in the scrum too. So yeah. you can imagine next time the boys pack down, he'll be... Uh, He'll be mouthing off for sure. But he was, he's a good player. Good bloke too. Very he was always bloke. the first one at the scrum. Whenever I refed Lakes, he was always the first one at the scrum. Yeah, he yeah. beat me a lot of times. Yeah, Michael, yeah, yeah. did you see that punch? Now, you're standing right on the sideline here. Did you see that one? You're probably only about eight metres away from it. <laughs> yeah, I did see it. It was more of an open hand, though. It, I don't really class it as a punch. So you love tap? Yeah, love tap, definitely. Neil says labelled it. Love tap, and I'm sure we'll see a few more of them today. A lot of them in the NRL, they, don't, they just get away with them, so... Okay, we've got Dane Bell here making another run. Josh's mate. Great tackle. He's in good field position here. We've got Watson. Gives it out to Towers. Now spreading the ball. ball. Well. Yeah, they're moving the ball oh. well. The centre hits a nice hole. Gets back infield. Great Number feet. four, that's Shane Dixon. Gee, Can he get there? That's a great try. That's a great try for Carrington. The referee's going to point to the spot. John Tanalu is going to award the try. Shane Dixon. There's a bit of afters after it too, a bit of push and shove. Yeah, the ball's been spread wide. Shane Dixon just changes the angle back on the infield, just catches all the Dungog players flat-footed, hits the hole, and he reaches out to put the ball down for the try, as we can see on the replay right now. The ball's been spread wide. They take it wide, and they hit a runner running straight, just sends the, the defence into chaos, reaches out. Crash, bang, try, four points. Just straight wide too. Great coming back off the other fullback on the back. Too, he's got a fair bit of work to do. Um, great feet and a really good finish too. It's a nice try. That'll, 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 that'll be good for the boys. They've been spreading the, spreading the ball well, uh, playing a good, not, nice, uh, nice positive footy and uh, nice reward for them there. So great try for Carrington. Yeah, absolutely. Michael, how'd the crowd sound for that one, mate? I know you're on the other side for the Carrington supporters, but could you hear them from where you are? Oh, it's been quite the crowd here for today. Uh, a lot of singing places around the ground. They're all up and happy and celebrating that one great try. Here's a, here's a chance. We might just see how long this microphone cord is. We might get you to go around the other side to have a look at some things. Yeah. Anyway, doing a great job down on the sideline. Well done, Michael. So, oh, thanks, Tom. Looking at this kicker, I don't know who it is, but you're you backing him in? Warren Towers. Yeah, Warren Towers, thank you very much. Warren Towers, you back him in? Yeah, he's a pretty good kicker. He's one of the highest successful goal kickers of C grade. That looked like a toe poke. Yep, I believe it was. <laughs> he's got it. it Extra like, two. It looked like two points as well. It looked like... <laughs> Toe poke, heeled kick, any type of kick, whatever it is. If it's two points, it's a good one. So, Pirates are up, 6-0. Beautiful Saturday today. Michael, how's the wind down there, mate? You're going to get blown off your feet yet? Yeah, there's a little bit of breeze, but not as bad as it was. Probably an hour or two ago. It's died right down. Thank you, Michael. Carrington gonna... will just be looking for a good completion here after points. Just try and... Uh get into the game, and uh, Dungog will be looking to sort of limit how many metres they make and yeah. uh, try and get their set off to a good start themselves. They're sort of playing all over a bit at the moment, Carrington. Yeah. playing a lot of good footy. I know you're not the, the best kicker, Josh, but 
You don't know. With that. a breeze like this behind your back, if you were a Carrington player, would you be looking for a 40 20? Yeah, maybe go early, but they're, they're playing a nice bit of footy themselves at the moment. But yeah, I, I, yeah, they probably will. Um, yeah, I'd say, yeah, but uh, no, they're, they're throwing the ball around nice. They're outside their 40 now, so they might. Uh, they might have a crack, but yeah. by, by you, I mean, give it to the halfback and him. I, would, him can I, do wouldn't, it. Yeah. I wouldn't personally, yeah. no. No, but uh, yeah, I appreciate that, mate. Thank you. You'd just, give, you'd just be the sledger at the opposition yeah. when you do get it. Well, they've gone to the sky. That's a yeah. massive kick. It's going to be hard in this win to take by the fullback. Greg Morris. Oh, oh it's, well done. It's the number two. It's, who is that? It's Aaron Cottam. Get out of the way, Lee Nevin. I want to take this ball. It's Great mine. Catch. As a fellow winger takes the next hit up, we've got Hamish Evans. Pity the... Oh, it's a bit of a slow play, the ball there. Claims from a penalty, but they're not going to get it. And we've got Dave Taylor making the next run. The Cole Train, especially <laughs> came down from the Super League just to play this grand final. So I'm sure the Dungog fans will be very happy with that. It seems like he's stopped eating the protein, though, so he's gotten a bit smaller. So Dungog are just making nice metres here. The crowd doesn't seem to be... As loud as when Carrington had got the ball. Michael, can you see many Dungog fans from where you are? Oh, yeah. They're all gathering around the Dungog's in goal area there. So it's great defence from so Carrington. The bar. Yeah, the bar area. Yeah, the bar. <laughs> oh, is that a co maybe it's a coincidence. I don't know. Dungog knows how to support their footy. I'm surprised you aren't down there with them in the line. Oh, I need to act professional while I'm on the job. Of course, mate. Well done. You're a top better. I am a top better. Get in better. the game. I am in the game. You're a top better too, Josh. <laughs> Thanks, boys. Of course, that's our major sponsor for today. Top better. As we got Carrington bringing him back to their own 30. Ref setting a good 10 here. He's getting him back a, a, a big 10. So that's what you want. A big open game of footy. Yeah, nice and open. Yeah, that's right. So we got Antilla making the run and playing the ball, as you do. That's Daniels. Daniels being met. Oh, he just that's got... A tough, that's a tough carry on that that's cricket squashed. pitch. He's lost yeah. the ball too. He just got squashed then. Unfortunately, the ball just popped out. Man. They'll have a scrum. Dungog are going to get the feed, and they're going to get some good field position here. See big Jason Saban packing down for Carrington in the, uh, in the front row there in the 20. Uh, very, very good front rower. Toiler. He's an absolute gun back in his day, um, and I'm sure he still goes all right as well. So keep an eye on him trucking the, uh, trucking the ball up. Yeah, out of this half, very, very good player. Absolutely. Now, Dungog, they've had a string of upsets just to get to this grand final. Now, they finished fifth on the ladder. So, Carrington are minor premiers and Dungog are fifth. No one would have thought, except for the Dungog residents, no one would have expected a Carrington versus Dungog grand final. But Dungog have done a parameter in 2009 and got to the grand final from bottom spot. Hopefully, all the hard games haven't taken a toll of them too much and they can perform today. So, we'll see what happens. Oh, big hit. Big hit, but he managed to get the ball, offload yeah. off. Nathan Ward managed to get the offload off. As now we've got James Foote. Another offload, but this one goes in a touch. He probably didn't need to do oh. that with a big fella. No, I think that might have been on tackle one as well. Yeah. I think he, he saw the leaders do it. He saw the forwards offloading, and he's like, you know what? Oh, I can do that as well. But he, he didn't that time, so don't know whether he'd be uh, having his license for offloading taken off him after that. Could, could be revoked after that one. Mm. If you are caught offloading when you don't need to, <laughs> you will lose half your licence. <laughs> Double demerits today at Harker Oval. <laughs> That's a nice pass. Who's that? Who's that? Brian and Chapman. You did a nice pass, mate. Oh, this is hard with these team lists. Oh, well. That's a claim of a high shot. Not going to get anything out of it. Greg Morris not happy with that. It's good. He's letting the game flow too. The ref's doing well so far. Like you say, nice big 10. Yeah, and, nice uh, big he's really He's letting it flow, which is good. He's not sort of pulling it up for too much. Yeah, that's good. So we've got Chapman there feeding. Oh, great tackle. It. Yeah, great tackle. Great hit. Feeding off to Daniels here. who's just met in solid defence. It's been some big hits today at Harker. Now we've got the number 20. Or is this Dane Bell? I can't see the numbers. He's there's made big, a break. Look at the Jason steps. Saban. He's a winger. He's a winger. Oh, Look that is that. the... Oh. I think that was big Jason Saban, boys. What a try. Oh. What a try. <laughs> Size of a vending machine. Steps like Benji Marshall. Four points. Get that in here. Jason Saban with the bust and then the goose step on the fullback. He's honestly, he's about 110 kilos. He's absolutely massive. What a try. Oh, mate. We saw it last week at Macquarie, Blake Gavin. Have a look at this right foot step. He's given the fend. But you watch two. this one, the little hop. Oh. What a try. Now, normally, a front rower 
or someone in the 20 jersey, they make a break and they just run over the top of the fullback. He stepped the fullback and ran over the top of him. We'll just, have, we'll just take one from each shelf. Michael, that happened right in front of you. How can you tell me about that? Two for one. Special. Just He's a, he's a monster. He knew it, he wanted that try and he got it. Oh, yeah. I can't believe he actually tried to step. That's usually how you bust an ACL. I know <laughs> <laughs> well, I'd bust an ACL doing that. I'd bust a PCL and LCL and MCL and XCL and everything CL. They'd be all gone. Minute silence for me next week if I try to do that. All right, so Warren Towers, he got the first one. This one seems to be a bit easier. He's a left foot kicker, I think. Please kick it with your left foot. Doesn't seem to go arc around. Are you backing him in, Josh? Yeah, mate, he'll throw this over. Yeah, me too. No commentators curse today, please. Fingers crossed. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> there you go. There it is. <sighs> Sorry, Warren. From all of us up here in the box, we apologise. And we will make sure that when Dungog score a try, we'll give their goal kicker a wrap. Just got a quick update on the injured player in the first hit up of the game. Yeah, mate. His wife and kids like came visit to him, but it looks like he's taken off his jerseys. I think he's done for the day. It's a big shame as well. It's a very big shame. That was Matt Mason who ended up going off. But he's saving it. again off the kickoff. Oh, he's going again. He wants he wants a hat trick today, and he earns himself a penalty. I wonder what this one's for. Michael, what can you tell me about this? Oh, I'm a bit far away, but it looks like a high tackle just straight on the neck there. Straight on the neck. World's biggest high tackle signal <laughs> in the world. But hey, as long as everyone can see it, we're all happy as Warren Towers kicks to touch and makes a good 21 metres. Not 20, not 22, but 21 metres exactly. So I think give them four tackles and they'll be 10 metres out attacking this line or... Lucky he held that pass up. That was going to be forward then. <laughs> Righty. So we've got Carrington with the ball now. A bit of an... <laughs> Hopefully he doesn't raise his knees any more than that in that tackle. So we've got it's Watson. Dowie half. Gives it to Towers. Towers cuts out. Now we've got Morris. Morris does another cutout ball. We've got Cody Pepperell now. He's down the sideline. Is he going to get taken yeah. out? He is. That would have been a very close decision because he did offload that ball. But touch judge Will Kirby has said, no, mate, your foot has gone out first. Yeah, no. So we might get a re No, we're, no we're not going to get a replay on that. Again, carrying a positive they're playing footy. They're playing footy, which is good to see, but uh, there's probably you know, a bit of a time and a place for it. And mm. It's good that he backed himself trying to get on the outside, but uh, a little bit close and slippery. Ground's a bit slippery and wet. He's uh, more often than not, you're going to get dragged into touch there, but uh, see what Dungog can come up with now. They probably need to put some points on before this half's out. All right. Dungoga got the ball now. That's the 15 with the ball. Nathan Ward. Get a nice quick play the ball there. They're going, they, they're going short side. They did only have two members on that side. So it's surprising they went to that, that side. And everyone else might have been flat forward. Who knows? As Tim Harlow makes a big run. Come and get me, boys. 10 metres. Super coach points right there. Tim Harlow, 430 grand. Get on to him. <laughs> Out of dummy half. I think that's... Uh, is that Bates? That's the nine. That's Daniel Bates. That's Daniel Bates. So it's an early kick in. I think they had a couple of tackles to spare here. Oh. Here's Atchison making a good run. Probably the fastest on the field. There's that pace we were talking about oh, earlier. Unfortunately, he just doesn't have the size on him. So it's going to be hard for him to bust out of tackles. But I tell you what, he'll be able to bust out a move. Not as good as the number 20. Not as good as Savin. But Atchison's got a good step on him as well. Speaking Same. of Savin, Bang. Another run and gets the offload. the offload. Second phase football here, as Josh spoke about before. Another one. Third phase. Oh, just breaking tackles galore here. Here's Warren Towers. Just as, he's just getting used to breaking this tackle, so he's just going to run at the biggest man on the field. But unfortunately, can't break out of a tackle from Tim Harlow. So we've got Ann Tiller. I like that last name. It sounds like an animal. <laughs> Here's Towers. Chases her onside there. Looking for Greg Morris. Gets the bounce. Oh, great well hands. Wow. Great work. Excellent hands there. Great that work was from Aaron, the two there. Aaron Cottam. So he's, he's juggled the ball and he sees it out in front of him. He needs to make a play for it, so he just dives for it. Welcome back to your classic catches. We've got Luke Ritz making a big run, but he's dropped on his, on his gut there and a big tackle from Shane Dixon. 
So we're number 15 now. That's Nathan Ward making a few runs and earns himself and a penalty. The referee's going to call time off here. He's going to have a word to the captains, I think. This will be could, interesting. This could be against Dungog. He's against Dungog. This will be an interesting one. He's, he's pulled him out. He said, come for a walk over to the sideline with me. I think one of the boys had a bit to say there after he got uh, didn't like some of the treatment he got from the Carrington oh, players. He might have had a bit to say to one of the Ritz. touch judges. He's pulled out Luke Ritz. Now, Luke Ritz just made the initial hit up. So I'd say Luke Ritz has had something that he didn't like. And referee Tantalou is pointing at Will Kirby here. So I'm going to guess that Luke Ritz has said something that may have offended the touch judge. Oh, that's a coach killer, that one. Absolute coach it's, killer. Oh, mouth and off. You don't want to see that. Carrington are in prime position now as Warren Towers kicks for touch and makes a good six metres. Here's Gareth Remage, who we thought was out cold, but it wasn't Gareth Remage. He's here and he's making big runs. By big, I mean three metres. But hey, we'll take anything. Seven yes. on the short side. Seven. He smelt the line and he's going to go for it. Unfortunately, the defence has switched on and they're watching out for his big right foot step. Here's Towers again. Looks to go inside, but goes himself. I think he was just didn't have the options there. I think he was hoping for um, uh, Remage to be running onto that one. But Shape on the left-hand side here, Carrington. And we've oh got a no. knock on at the rough. Spilled it. Michael, what happened then? I looked away. Oh, he just dropped it cold. He tried to get that quick play from dummy half. He just forgot to pick up the ball correctly. He saw exactly the same thing in the first game. He just went to pass it, slipped out of his hands. Is the, is the field... Is the grass a bit wet, Michael? Is oh. it a bit dewy out there? Or is it dried up from this it, morning? It's pretty dried up. This sunshine like, is a strong heat and dried up the grass a fair bit, so the ball isn't that slippery. Well, then there's no excuses then, is there, Michael? None. None at all. Apologies to Dungog, but you did drop the ball. No, sorry, not Dungog. Dungog have just received a penalty. A 10-metre penalty here. It was Carrington that just dropped the ball, may I say. And I shouldn't be able to mix them up. One's blue and one's maroon. It's like Color state of blind. origin here today. It's a good touch finder. Sort of. Yeah, Breeze is pretty stiff there. It's going to be hard kicking into that going for touches. Probably going to be tougher to peel off metres than it looks from here. Yeah, it's a good point there. That, we can see the trees in the background waving, geez, making conditions geez, very that's hard. that's solid defence from Carrington. Oh, no, unfortunately the referee, John Tantalou, doesn't think it's that solid. He thinks it's high. Penalty goes to Dungog. Now, Dungog are, are liking this. So they've got a player down at the moment, and it looks like they're going to get an extra 10 metres. Yeah, someone's mouthed off there. Obviously, John Tantalou has made a stance here. You're going to mouth off at me. I'm just going to penalise you. If you mouth off at me after a penalty, I'm just going to march you 10. He's not going to take any crap from players, for lack of a better word, that we can use on live. All right, so Good Tim carry. Harlow running a block line there. I think everyone thought he was going to get that, including myself. Josh, yeah, you reckon Dungog, you're back in Dungog for this set? Yeah, mate, a lot of see him go in. They've, uh, they're defending well. Um, the, the, the tries that Carrington have scored have been uh, two nice tries, so uh, they're defending well. A lot of see him doing a little bit more with the ball, but they're, uh, you know, they're hanging in there, which is good. That's good. That looked good. Uh, I thought he was, he did offload there. Now, he's made, I thought he was going to give it to the short side, but he's turned it back to the open. And now we've got Dave. Is that, that's touch, that'll be six that's, more. As the referee believes so. We've got the, is that Luke Ritz is making a great run down the, the left channel. And we do have six tackle. more. Great call, Josh. Saw it from there. And what have we got now? We've got time off. Should go back for the play of the ball, I think. I agree, mate. Well, I think we'll go back for the play of the ball here. We'll call this a offload. John Tantalou consulting with touch judge Will Kirby. What are we going to do? Strip. Strip. Okay. So instead of a play of the ball for zero, they're getting a penalty. In the end, it's... Oh, no. We've got time off again. He's calling out the Carrington captain. Just Michael, what can you tell me about this? You're not too far away from the action. Yeah, I believe Will Kirby comes in with the call, but the Carrington players aren't very happy with it. So just a bit of discussion with centre referee John here. Best ponytail in the, the referees association, my ad. By far. By far, absolutely. Let's see what Dungog can dish up here. There, uh, I'm backing them. If they can get some second phase out, I think they're yeah, going to score here. I agree. So Tim Harlow, short of the line, charges. Can he get there? Hits and spins, but he's short. So we've got Bader at dummy half. Cuts him out. Gives it to Dave Taylor. Dave Great Taylor ball. spreads it wide. Great ball. No, this is Dave Taylor now. Gives it to Aaron Cottam. Good scrambling defence by Carrington too. I'm getting it wrong. I think that might have been uh, Hamish Evans. 
Anyway, we've got David Shears making a run now. That's great line speed. Is it? Goes short side. He's taken by a very good tackle from Carrington there. Hard to see these numbers. We've got Jake Clifton calling it in field. He wants the ball. We've got another pass. No, oh. steps off his left foot. Kicks for himself. Can he chase Ooh, it? The wind's going to pull it back, heavy. but not enough. We've got a 20 tap for Carrington. Good defence there from the Pirates. Good uh, good line speed on the shift and, uh, and good scramble too. And... Uh, they get rewarded with seven tackles here. Oh. Let off. He's going. He's hoping the wind would bring that back, but unfortunately, Michael, did the wind just die off at that last second? Is the wind against Dungong? Oh, the wind has picked up a fair bit since last time I spoke to you guys. Which wasn't that long ago. Yeah, it wasn't that long ago, but the wind has definitely picked up. It's a it's a factor in this game. Always, now. always nice to hear from you, Michael. Enjoy the sideline. Oh, we'll thank get, you. We'll get back to the game here. Do we do have a seven tackle set for Carrington? As we give it, oh, another big bopper making a big run. Except I don't know who that is. Here's Towers inside the 40. You, you call it, Josh is going for the 40 20. Finds the deck. This ball could roll it's dead. Pull up, I think. Oh. Just dead. Any other Saturday, we'd have. But probably he'd have to pick up that ball in his own in goal and make a play for it. But unfortunately, with this win, the ball's just going to roll dead. We're not going to. See many that are going to pull up in that in goal. So we're, so we're 26 minutes in. We've only seen the two tries. I was expecting a bit of a higher scoring game, much like last night. So we've got no markers here. Badio's going to make a, make a oh, play great for Great work from the Nice, nine. nice little pass there to Lee Nevin. That's the fullback. I was going to call it Greg Morris, but I'm talking about the wrong team. Here's Harlow. Straight and narrow. Brought down. 35 out. Play the ball. Here's Bader. Oh, gives a nice long pass to the wing. That's Hamish Evans. Comes back in field, but is crunched. The big man on little man. Here's Harlow again, making his 50,000th run. We've got numbers here. Yeah, we've got numbers here, but he, I think a bit of a tunnel vision. No, he gets the offload. Gives it to the 12. Chance here. That's Brad Smith. Gives it to James and Foote. James there. Foote is getting there, and he's going to get the first Dungog try and the third try of the game. This puts him back in the game. And like we say, a little bit of second phase play there from the Dungog boys, and that's where it's going to open up for him. A couple of the big boys getting offloads around the middle of the field. Uh, quick answer the boys on the outside there, and a uh, nice try. Very, very nice try. Yeah, Michael, you nearly got taken out then. Very close to you. What can you tell me about it? How's the vibe down there? Oh, it's... They're absolutely loving it. What a great try to dunk. Absolutely. He had Brad Smith there down the short side and he found himself at a three on two and he just decided to hit James Foote who's just running a straight line in between the gap and manages just to cut open the Carrington defence and make his way and slam that ball in the end goal. Now, this, this goal from Phil Bader, it's a hard one with that win. Are you backing him in, Josh? Jeez, he's kicking into a pretty stiff breeze. They're right foot. He's on the right side for a right footer. But... Uh Gee, it's going to be a tough kick with that win, but we'll see how he goes. I'm going to say yes, he's going to get it. He is, I might say, the leading goal scorer in C grade with 59 goals in the round games. And I'm sure he would have banged a few over in the semifinals, but I'm going to back him in. Leading goal scorer. He just hooked it around. Yep, yep. I told you. I said I'd give Dungog a rap, and I gave him a rap. Now we're even. No more commentators curse, please. Saturday football, great day. It's nice and windy, stirring things up a little bit. And we've got a ball game here. We're 8 4, 10 4 to the Pirates. And he's bought the kickoff. Shane Dixon has gone, jumped the gun a little bit, I think. Nice low kickoff, finding the deck. Brings it back. It's going to be met. Lee O'Connor is on the field. He's on the We're field. He's, knock on. Oh, his first hit up of the day. Just been subbed on. He claims a strip. But John Tanalu is just going to rule that a lost ball. That's a. Jeez, that's that's a, not what you want after points. You really no. want to be completing that set. And after nah. points, first hit up. Michael, the Carrington crowd, they go up after that. They're nice and excited now. 
Yep, all on their feet, heads in the air after that call. Michael, they're all on their feet because there's no chairs over there. That's a very good observation <laughs> as well. <laughs> How many of them have got tinnies in their hands? I reckon about 33.5% at this stage. You serious? 33.5? Yep, through my small so sample. So smidget past a third. Right, oh, okay. Yep. We'll go with that. Brought to you by looking man. dangerous here. Yes, they are. That's Michael French. Just being brought down. He's, he's just a nice little settler setting up for something big here. Now we've got Matthew Crossingham. He's going for the Jeez, line. He's very close He's there. claiming the try. I think he might give this. Touch judge Will Kirby has gone into the in goal signifying that he sees nothing wrong with this. John Tenelu may just consult with him and say that, have you seen the ball on the deck? Will's going to say yes. This well, is going to be a try, try to Crossingham. And it's going to put Carrington... 14 points to four in front. Geez, that's a real, uh, that's a real tough blow for Dungog after a nice try. Uh, they really wanted to complete that set after it, and instead they've coughed the ball up in another pretty soft try, to be honest. I was a little bit soft on the short side there. Um, they'll really be looking to recover a uh, big set of six after this. Michael, could you hear what was said between referee Tanalu and touch judge Kirby? No idea, but I heard a couple of disgruntled comments from the Dungog crowd. Then Will Kirby's not their favourite touch judge at the moment after that call. Will, Cur Will Kirby's not a lot of people's favourite touch judge. <laughs> ah, he's my favourite touch judge though, Will Kirby. You do all right sometimes. Like me, 60% of the time, I'm always right. It's better than 50%. It's a pass. <laughs> better than 50%. Two minutes in heaven is better than one minute in heaven. You're not wrong. That's I'm damn right I'm not wrong. 60% <laughs> of the time, I'm not wrong. Anyway, Warren Towers trying to make it... Two from three. I'm going to say no comment. Straight through. I was going to say he would get it for yeah, the record. Well, he did get it. I'm glad you didn't say that because we would have had uh, maybe the, the touch judges waving it away. So we've got 16 points to four. Carrington are leading. We've got nine minutes to play in this first half. Josh, you reckon Dungog can get on the board before half time? Yeah, mate, it's going to be a big set of six here. They're going to need to really sort of muscle up and uh, try and limit Caro from spreading the ball like they are. And uh, when they've got it, they just need to be a bit patient, maybe put the offloads away for a little bit and uh, just try and get back in the arm wrestle. I think they, I think they really need to score in the, before half time. Just, just a psychological advantage of knowing that they're going to half time only down by six rather than ten. So, no, rather than twelve, sorry. As the referee Tanley just gets him to go back and play the ball on the mark. And we've got another settler. Oh, you can hear that phantom siren from up here. Michael, can you hear the phantom siren? Yeah, it's very loud and clear on the field. I can understand the confusion in the previous game. Yes, we'll talk about that later, maybe a little bit at half time. Looks like Jason Saban's getting ready to come on for a second shift in the middle too. Oh. So, uh... oh no. We've had a forward pass call. Tanaloo points to touch judge Will Kirby. So I think, Michael, the Dungog crowd might be appreciating that call from Kirby. He might be all their best mates again. Yeah, they're all best mates with the close touch judge here. They're, they're loving that call. He's got, a, he's got one of those faces, Will Kirby. It just looks like a Dungog face. Yep, you just, you just got to love it. <laughs> you got to love it. Got to love, love a good touch judge face. Anyway, Dungog have got a great opportunity now to make this a six-point ball game rather than a 12-point ball game. Oof. Oh, great hands, hands there. So he turned back into the winger, and that looks like Hamish Evans. Batter goes short side. Oh, oh no. Boys. That's unfortunate error there from the number 14, Mitch Evans. We haven't seen a lot of Mitch Evans today. Hopefully, we'll see a lot more of him, and it'll be a, a lot of good runs and a lot of good tackles. But unfortunately, that was just an unfortunate error. But we've seen a lot of that today, so yeah, I can't single just, him they're out. They're shooting themselves in the foot a little bit, like we say. They need to just sort of get back in the arm wrestle. They've got... Uh, We've seen they can score points relatively easily when they're down here. They've just got to get themselves down here, get, get in the grind a little bit, do the hard stuff up the middle and, uh, and get, themselves in the, uh, get themselves in the arm wrestle and back in the contest. Well, they need to work on their defence because the Carrington Pirates are the most prominent attacking team in C grade. They've scored 598 points just in the round games alone. Far out. Yeah, I know. You were going to say a different word yeah. than the start <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> I could see, I could hear it coming. It was brewing. It was a very good uh, shift right at the last minute. Oh, bit of good words. Harlow again. Yeah, a bit of words there. Tim Harlow's just trying to rev his boys up. Bit of niggle, but hey, it makes for good footy a little bit of niggle. 
Can't have game without it, especially a grand final. As we got the 40 again. Warren Towers goes for a low kick, attempting a 40-20. It was spilled, so it was a good tactic from Warren Towers. He's called a knock-on. Knock on. On. An unfortunate call against Lee Nevin. Personally, I thought he might have been calling that drop back, but hey, we've got to live with it now. So he's going up to have a chat with Nevin about the way he saw this. So... Oh, I think we've had a couple more lifts because he's gonna he's gonna pull someone else from Dungog here. I know he seemed to calm Nevin down at once, at one point. Understandable, Michael. You'd be a little bit unhappy if you got called a a knock on there. Yeah, I would be, and the crowd with me are not very happy with that decision, but. I'm sure it's the right one. They're in a lot better position than I was. As a very respected captain, Josh, what would you say to the referee if you got, if you thought you were uh, wrongly accused and of a knock-on? Oh, hang on, sorry, mate. There's just a nice bit of ball movement there from Carrington. Oh, mate, you've just got to... The boys just need to shut their mouths and get on with it a little bit, mate. Too many of the boys carrying on like good sorts. They, oh, just, no. need to, uh, they just need to get on with it, I think. Especially the Dungog boys. They're behind here, so they need to just sort of stop carrying on and get on with it, I think. Greg Morris is in a bit of pain. Michael, can you tell me a bit, of a, a bit about that? Yeah, the moment he got tackled, he just jumped straight up. A leg injury, I believe. The trainer's examining his leg as we speak. He's, he's, he's hurt. Yeah, mate, that didn't look good. It looked like his leg just might have buckled and just got around the wrong way in the tackle. I think it might have been his ankle, Michael. Yeah, it could be. I know it's that lower leg area. This is a grand final. If there's anything that's going to motivate you to keep playing, it's going to be this, especially when you're up by a 12-point lead and there's still a second half remaining. So he'll stay on here and he'll just battle through it. They might put a bit of tape on it at half time. As we can see, Matt Crossingham making a big run. Previous try score, he's going for a double. Carrington have had the big boys score today. Let's see if we can get them all the forwards a try. It's saving out on that left edge there now. Speaking of try scorers, number 20, saving. I hope it is saving. It's, I think it's saving. Yeah, it better be. Okay, we're shifting it back to the open side. Here's Towers looking for a short oh, ball. Hits crossing hand. Great shape, good defence. Yeah, great good defence, Dungog. Read that like a book. Okay, it's now to... to chance an injury here. He's going to be a slow play, the ball. Interesting to see which way Warren Towers goes. He chooses short side. Kicks for himself. This could be a little bit of a pinball so ricochet he here. Nearly the ball's up. gone dead. Now we're going to have a 20-metre restart. So I think the ball was initially played out by Dungog and then... Again by Carrington. Back, back onto the Carrington player and, uh, and out. Okay, so Dungog have got a seven tackle set here. Let's see what they can do with it. Breaks out a one tackle. Makes a good 11 metres on the first run for a zero tackle. That's what the Dungog coach wants to see. As we go short side, we bring it up. As I get my team sheet out. That's a good start to the set for Dungog. Good okay. metres. Bates at dummy half, gives it to Harlow. Harlow makes another run and another good, good offload. offload. Now we've got to spread it wide. Here's Lee Nevin, wants to make up for his initial error. I can smell a Lee Nevin try, actually. I can smell one. It's, it's smelling there. Oh. Number four. He's through. Oh! So, I think the referee's got that one wrong there. He played the advantage for the Mitch, shoulder charge. Mitch Nevins, he may have got shoulder charge, but unfortunately... Now, while the shoulder charge may have been correct, I think Dungog are complaining that the advantage wasn't played and the fact that Mitch Nevins was able to get a, a line break out of it. So they will have the penalty, but it's unfortunate because they could have had to play the ball only a couple of metres out, if not a try. Yeah, there was a lot of disgruntled Dungog supporters after that decision, but a penalty's a penalty. You Jeez. never see many... Daniel Bates looking really creative out of dummy half too. He's starting to come alive this last sort of five minutes of the half. He's really, uh, he's really getting at the... Uh, catching out a couple of lazy Carrington defenders oh, there. Oh, experience. He's, going for, he's looking for his Jeez, double there. James Foote. He's there. Can he get it? That's a try. That's a try. He's pointing to the spot. John Tanalu. he's going to give this. That's a double for James Foote. Another good try. Bit of relief there for Dungog fans. Thought they were robbed of a try-scoring opportunity, but hey, they just got a real one then. So can't complain there. That, that, we've got a ball game now. This is 16-8, to 8, cost, possibly soon 16-10. Michael on the sideline. Oh, the moment the grounding there, possible try. Every Dungog citizen here today jumped up in celebration. Brute strength, just getting over that one, James Ford, just showing what he's made of. He had no right to score that try. He had two blokes hanging off him, and he manages to get his arm into the small gap and plant that ball on the line. What do you think, Josh? Mate, great try. Good, uh, good bit of left-to-right ball movement. Sorry, right-to-left ball movement. And uh, 
Mate, he's just he, he must be a lot stronger than he looks, young uh, young James Foot. He's he's just barged over, just sort of carried two blokes over with him there and managed to slam the ball down. So uh, great effort from the big fella and uh, good effort from Dungog too. They're uh, they're clawing their way back into this one and that's a, that's a nice try just before half time. Well, we spoke about it before. Dungog need to score, and they've done that. Let's see if they can kick the goal. I'm gonna again say no comment, and no no, no one does either. He looks good off the boot. Jeez, that's a lovely kick. Oh. Mate, splits the crossbar in two there, straight over the dot. If that was a video game or an iPhone app, you'd get double points for that. Now, they really want to complete this set, Dungog. They really need to uh, try and uh, get as far away as what they did after the last points. They really want to complete this good set of six and a good kick on the end of it. Oh, we got, we're going to have a penalty here. Yeah, they got a penalty here, boys. Was that offside off the kickoff? Yeah, I think he's, he's pointing to the line. He's cutting that line with his signal. So I'd say we've got a couple of Carrington boys. Now, no, the, the hoot has gone. So we're going to have, have you know, one a, play. He's a good goal kicker. Would you go for the two here? Into the breeze? Probably not, mate. Probably not. Yeah, good point, actually. Michael, you probably uh, know about this breeze more than we do. So they're just going to take a settler. Yeah, that's a very good option. The breeze is actually going the opposite direction. So it'd be harder for him to kick it. Possibly. If you were Carrington, would you have gone for the two? Ah, uh, what would that have been? Yeah, eight point lead. Yeah, I probably would have. Yeah, it would have been nice. That's uh, you know, put it outside a converted try. But uh, anyway, there's still 40 minutes of footy to play. So see what happens. So as we go into half time, now last half time in D grade, we broke out a bit of trivia. So. Josh, you up for answering a bit of trivia questions? Yeah, why not, mate? Well, Michael, I know Fire he's just going to come up here into the box with us and just break out his trivia, so we'll see what happens now if we can just find it. So bear with us. We'll just go through our papers. All righty. So, Michael. Hello, Tom. You up here with us? Yes, I am. All right, boys. I've got the first question with us here. So it's an NRL, NRL trivia. Yeah. Okay, so which of the current NRL players have the most NRL matches. So current NRL players have played the most. Like so, yeah, NRL is matches. It, so is it a multiple choice or are we just uh, anyone? No, no. It's, uh, the, your multiple choice is the fact that it's current. So all the current players is your multiple choice. Are we answering now? Do you want to an answer now? Yeah, mate. Oh, yeah. It'd have to be Corey Parker, wouldn't it? So you're going Corey Parker. Michael, can you... No, get off your phone and stop Googling. <laughs> Give me an answer, mate. Who's the, which current NRL player have played the most NRL matches? The most. I reckon... Cameron Smith. You're going to get Cameron Smith. Well, I can tell you Cameron Smith's about 3.30. But, yeah, you're right, Josh. Corey Parker's Corey on 346 Parker. games. 347 after last... Oh, no, 346 after last night, I believe. Yeah. So, Michael, have you got a, a question for us, mate? Oh, yes. Well, then, please okay. read it out. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad okay. you've got a question. Can we hear it? Okay, this is a multiple choice one. Good. What is a team name for Eastern Suburbs? God. Swans, ducks, roosters, or tricolours? What? Tricolours. Well, it could be. Are you, did you just answer it? No. Oh, it's one of the options. Okay, okay. The so, option. so the question is, what... What is the team name for Eastern Suburbs? Oh, Eastern Suburbs. Yes. Oh, okay. I thought you were talking East Maitland. <laughs> no, that's the Mighty Griffins, yeah, I believe. Yeah, that's the Mighty Griffins. So, um... Mate, I have no idea. What were the answers again? I'm going to have a stab. Swans, ducks, roosters, tricolours. Oh, it'd be the roosters, wouldn't it? Josh, do you think it's the roosters? I, I think so. I don't know too much about the NRL. Well, but Eastern I, Suburbs, I, I think that's just the Sydney City. They just game Sydney City. Am I right? Did I get it? One moment. Loading. Loading. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> 3G. You need to get 4G. I know. I'm on actually H plus at the moment. Well, it's so not doing a very good job for I you. Know, you should get an iPhone. Yeah, maybe. It's, it's on the to-do list. Just bear with us, viewers. Mate, Josh, Josh is gone, mate. You've, 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 you've made him wait too much. Josh is, gone, Josh is gone to take a wee-wee. <laughs> Come on, Michael. It's it, Roosters. The, okay, the it's correct roosters. answer is Roosters. Of course it's Roosters. That's what I said. 60% of the time I'm right. <laughs> All right, I'm going to give you one now. Yep. And this is for everyone here. Everyone in this room, we've got some trivia going. Glenn Lazarus has won premierships with three clubs. Who are they? Who are the three clubs? I, I Glenn see. Lazarus. I'd, 
<laughs> yeah, we no, need, yeah, yeah, we need a, a, you should be able to. It'll be. Yeah, so we got an answer, Michael. Just start. yeah, okay. Canberra, Brisbane, and Melbourne. Does that sound about right, Michael? Are you yep, happy to I'll, go with him? I'll, happy? I'm, I'm happy so with you've my used phone, phone a friend. friend you've, yep. ha- you've used your phone a friend lifeline. Yes, and he is correct. Oh, That's Brisbane, Canberra, and Melbourne. I knew I picked a good friend. <laughs> it's great you're having only, you're friends. You're only one. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Michael. Apologies about that one, mate. You got one for me, or do you want me to give you another one? Oh, this year, what team has conceded the most penalties? Oh, penalties. Yep. I know which player has, but so what team? I, I'm gonna. I, th- I think the player was Ryan James. Uh, but as as far as team goes, I know the Roosters give away a lot of penalties. Yeah. And if you're in a rooster mood, we could just have a double rooster answer. But I'm going to go undisciplined. I'm going to go Melbourne because they give away a lot um, of deliberate penalties to get in. You're going to go Melbourne with me? Okay, we've got the Carrington leader up here. So you're going to go Melbourne with me. Now, that's my friend. So we're going to Melbourne. Tell me I'm right. No, nah, it's Manly. Manly. Oh. Yeah. Oh, of course it's Manly. <laughs> oh, Manly. Insert typical Manly comment here. I'm not going to do that. <laughs> But we can all use our imagination for what I want to say about Manly. Anyway. All right, my turn. I'll give you, we might have time for one more here. We yep, seem to be going a long half time. This is a state of origin question. Okay, I'm keen. Who has won man of the match honours in the most state of origin matches? Now, it's a multiple choice, this one. I yeah, do have I'm, one multiple choice. I need the multiple so our choice. options, Alan Langer, Andrew Johns, Darren Lockyer or Wally Lewis? Well, I'll, I am a proud Newcastle Knights supporter, so I'm going with Andrew. Oh, so I'd just say you're a Newcastle Knights supporter. I wouldn't say you're proud of anything. <laughs> we've, we've been a bit rough over the past two seasons, but next season's our season. Mate, I'm with you, mate. I'm a Knights supporter as well, and I do hope we can turn it around. All the rookies we blooded this year do have a bit of experience yeah, under them. So like Hello, Hunter Man Stadium. We can that. see you. But the answer is, what did you say the answer was? Andrew. Well, I can tell you now that... Wrong. Okay. No. Would you like to have another crack at it? I'll give you, I'll give you your money back. Oh. So you don't win anything, but you get your money back if you can get it now. So we've got Alan Langer, Darren Lockyer, or Wally Lewis. Or you can answer Andrew Johns again and be wrong again. <laughs> uh, nah. Um, I'll go Darren Lockyer. Well, nah. he's... Mate, it's the king. Oh. King Wally. Nine times Wally's got it. Equal next best to Alan Langer and Darren Lockyer, but they're on only on five. Oh, I'm, I'm yeah, no, way so, off. So that means it's time for you to go back to the sideline. Thank yeah, you for coming I'll up and back. sharing your trivia knowledge with me, even though that was lack of. I know. The Dungog are just r- walking out for the second half now. So if you can go and join them now, maybe give us a bit of uh, injury updates and some halftime talk updates. That'd be excellent. So thank you, Michael. All good. Running down now. Yep. Are you puffing? <laughs> <laughs> No, I'm just unfit at the moment. You're just unfit. <laughs> Mate, it's finals time. You can't be unfit. So Dungog are out there first. Okay, I'm back on the grass. Can you, can you give me any knowledge? I know you haven't been down there for very long, but can you give me any insight to what might have been said at halftime for Dungog or what you think might have been said at halftime well, by the coach? Dungog, they're, they're out there quick, so they, I reckon that we've had a quicker team chat, so just, just do everything right. Go back to the bases, just... Do all the small things, the one percenters. Yeah, imagine that. You're, you're at halftime, you're a footy player, and the coach walks in. Do everything right <laughs> in the second half and you'll win. Do everything right. Just do it all right. I, was, I think it might have been a little bit more complex than that, Michael. Or just like they can't run without let's heads just, or something. Let's just say your application to coach the Knights may be declined. <laughs> oh, I'll just coach, I know, some under sixes, East Maitland Griffins or something. <laughs> yeah, maybe, maybe. That's about my coaching skill level. Oh, well, they'll coach you, mate. Yeah, they probably would. You can just coach them some maths. Yeah, I can do numbers. Next thing you know, the East Maitland Griffins will be doing calculus. Mate, we're training for the Math Olympics. <laughs> math Olympics. Mathletics. Mathletics. That's a thing now, isn't it? Yeah, it's some okay. online thing. Well, Neil says uh, on his way back up, I think there was a bit of a lineup for the Porta Potties, so he'll be with us shortly. So it's just me and Michael here, my man in the foot for, fort for now, and Dungog are about to kick off. So Dungog are going to need the first try here if they're going to have a chance at this title. But we'll see what happens. They've got plenty of time to do it. They're only down by six. Now they've got a lot of experience, and that will really come through in these late stages of the game. They that will. Experience. They will. And they do have the wind oh. with them. And this could be a line dropout. 
depending on where this knock-on was, depends on the restart. Touch judges call here. What has he ruled? He's assisting the centre referee. He's ruled that he's knocked on in the field of play. That's unfortunate. I think that was Warren Tower, as you can tell by his big padding on his arm. Mal Meninga style. Wonder if he ran into a goalpost one time. <laughs> he may, he possibly might have. Yeah. Yeah, Dungog there in a very good position here. Down a couple of points. This can equalise them. Thank you, Michael. As Dungog feed the scrum, they go straight forward. We've got Wes Nelson with a big hit up. Carries the Carrington players to the try line, but is brought down a metre short. Referee barking orders. We've got now Bates. Gives it to Harlow. Short of the line. Harlow's over. The ball is loose. It is play on. Carrington, get out of jail there. I'm back. I'm missing all the action. Sorry, boys. Thanks, mate. It's all good. When you got to go, <laughs> you got to go. We just, uh, just had a bit of trivia at halftime, so you didn't miss out on much. Everyone was involved. Everyone's involved today. <laughs> Grand final day. You can't be here and be not involved in something. Good bit of early field position for Dungog too. They'll be looking for a big set defensively here, trying to get themselves back in this one. They will be. Oh, that's a strip, surely. No, play on. That's no, play on. This is what Dungog need. Oh, we He's could going have a try. Right. Great Andrew. try. He's there. He's Aaron gonna give it. Cottom. It's not Andrew. It's Aaron Cottom. Let's see what the decision is. He's going to point to the spot there. That's a yeah, great try. He's telling try. the players to go away. He's going to consult with the touch judge, Will Kirby, who's now on the other side. It's all in the Will Kirby's corner today. And he points to the spot. It's that's, a try to cut him. That's a great start for Dungog. Absolutely fantastic start for the Can boys we, there. Unbelievable finish in the corner. I'd like to get a replay on that, but our replay man is just... <laughs> he's vanished. Oh, he's going to the toilet as well. Let's just all go to the toilet. Imagine... Hey, Josh, have you ever been playing and you're in the middle of a half, so it's 20 minutes into a game, and you're just busting to go to the toilet? Yeah, but, mate, you know, the, the way I play footy, I don't do too much. I generally i am able to sneak off and no one notices. So uh, <laughs> that's, that, that's me, mate. A couple of boys in the middle might, uh, might struggle there. But, uh, yeah, no, that, that's me, mate. I, I can get away with these things. So you don't do like a Russell Packer or anything? No, mate, no, no. I'll learn from, I'll learn from Russell's mistake. <laughs> I've had, uh, I've had that happen once when I was refereeing a game. It was at uh, Fingal Bay. <laughs> and um, I don't know why, but the guy told me he was doing it. Big kick here. Big kick. He is. He's a very good kicker and he's got the win with him. But did we just jinx Looks him? Looks good. No. no. Oh. That's his first miss of the day. Yeah, but the Dungog supporters are still supporting him even though he missed. So Was it his first miss? No, it's his, he's kicked one from three. It has to be one from three because they're on 14. Good mathematics, Tom. Thanks, mate. I try my best. Great start for Dungog there. That's, uh, they'll, they'll get a lot of confidence out of that. Let's hope uh, they can just complete Short this Short kick because into the wind. Oh, wow. That's a different tactic. And, a and they come up with it. Caro. Just it's give yourself some chocolates there. There we got the number 12. That's Todd Antilla. Best name in the comp. Gives it out to Dane Bell. I think that's Dane Bell. Now it is Frenchy. Michael French. Plays it to Watson. Watson gives it to that's ba Bell. Bell again there. Yeah, we hope it's staying, Bill. I can't see the numbers. I just see the names. The Beltron. Yeah, Watson again at dummy half. Gives it to the halfback. That's Chapman. Short ball into a hard runner. Pokes his nose through, but doesn't get the rest of his body through, unfortunately. Here's Chapman again. Gives it to Towers. Towers looks for runners. And we've got to knock unfortunately, on. Unfortunately, the ball was just spilled forward, and it's not what you want if you're a Caro fan, but a big let off for Dungog here. Michael on the sideline. Oh, yeah, the... Dungog supporters, they're, they're in mixed sorts. <laughs> they're, they're gone pretty quiet at the moment. You've got to be ready, mate. I'm just going to go <laughs> to you whenever I can. I'm always so ready, Tom. Always be ready. Always have something in your pocket to pull out and say. There you, Josh. Can you make any comments here? You reckon Dungog can get far in this uh, set? Mate, they'll be looking for just complete this set. They just want to complete this one. Um, they're well, you know, two points behind. That's a great start for them this half. They're just going to want to complete this set. Um, get a good kick on the end of it. In, uh, with that win, their backs now too. So, uh be looking for a nice uh, nice set here. Probably just a lot of one-out runs. Just, we've got an injury there. Yeah, we've got an injury. It's a massive uh, advantage, that win. But it, it seems like if you can see the trees in the background, the wind may have died off a little bit. Michael, can you can you tell me about the wind? Is it is it as strong as it was in the first half, or are the wind gods against Dungog like we mentioned before? It's basically non-existent at the moment. Like There's practically no wind. Before, it's like a hurricane, but now there's nothing. Yeah, wow. That's, that's a big blow for Dungog. 
The wind. Ha. Ha. Big blow. Ha. Wind. Pun. Ha. 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 Me here all day. Timmy Harlow's <laughs> I, love just, a, I love a good pun. Timmy Harlow's just come off for a spell too. Where's he going? <laughs> Maybe to the loo. <laughs> 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 I love it. He probably is. He's going over yeah. the side somewhere. He's walking towards me. Try and grab an interview on the way past. <laughs> He's brushed you. Definitely might mouth off at you. <laughs> anyway, Doug go with the ball. Making it out of their own half. They're at the 40. Here's Bates at dummy half. Oh, we've got a little error. Oh, that's, a, that's a knock on at the nine oh, there, Bates. You saw a little bobble of some sort. That's a huge blow. Bates actually, uh, Bates actually won a premiership last year with Greta Brankston. Sorry, uh, 2014 um, with the Greta Brankston Colts. And he was a man of the match in that grand final as well. So uh, he's, uh, he's been on the big stage before and performed. But that's uh, a little bit of a slip up there from the, uh, from the nine. But he'll be looking to, uh, looking to make up for that this set. We've had a few grand final winning specialists here, Dungog and as well. So hopefully when push comes to shove, if this game gets real close, these guys with experience can step up. As we've got Gareth Remage making his way to the line after beating the first defender. As we've got Watson waiting at dummy half, waiting. The ball is being played pretty slow, so he gives it out to Towers. Towers turns it back on the inside to Michael French, and yeah. French has tackled 10 metres Bit of shape out. here on the left-hand side, this too. This is going to look good. Nice depth. Here's Chapman. Chapman gives it. Oh, the, the decision was right. Oh, it's a good offload. Chapman's got the ball again. He's light on his feet. He finds... Greg Morris. Oh, Greg feet. Morris looking for the line. He draws and passes. Great defence. Great defence. Good hit from the winger. He's going to go close there. Oh, We've he's given a penalty. a penalty. What's this Strip. one? Strip the ball. Unfortunate there. I don't know whether that was done deliberately or not. Could be a little bit of a Melbourne Storm tactic. but Again, that second phase play is just uh, so dangerous. They've got guys on the ball who can uh, beat blokes one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, very, very dangerous there from Carrington. Looking good. Mm. Oh, no. Hopefully that's, that's going back. backwards for him. It's, it's play on now. Warren Towers picking up the crumbs there as a good captain coach. Now here's Watson. Makes a dart out of dummy. I sees the gap. Watson's going to go through. This could be, a, Jeez, this could be controversial. Double, hint, hint of a double movement there. Yeah, a little bit of a hint here. So the touch judges pull up short of this. Oh, I, don't the, think, I don't think they're going to give this one. Double movement. Oh. Now, the temptation is there. He's got through. He's gone down. He saw the line yep. in, in, within inches. Yep. And he's just reached out and planted the ball a second time. Fair call from John Tanalu. Yep. Well done on picking that up, Damien Callender. Yep. Josh, as a player, have you ever get, do you ever get the temptation getting tackled so short of the line? Just the temptation there to just reach out again? Is uh, it? Mate, it doesn't really happen. I, I usually either stroll over untouched or... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Or I'm, uh, or I'm uh, well and truly not even close, mate. So I uh, don't really find myself in that position too many times. But no, the temptation is, uh, especially in a grand final too, mate, you want to, you know, these blokes are going to do, do, uh, do everything. Jeez, that's a good hit. That's a great hit. I'm just going to tee up a um, sound effect for our uh, comediness. Do we really need a sound Jeez. effect, Tom? Up in the box we do, mate, but... Down there on the sideline, you probably don't. <laughs> Carrington are really muscling up now in defence too. So that's on standby. So, Dungog, good possession here. Deep into the Carrington half. Here's Bates. Goes one way, but shifts There's the other way. He finds a gap. Bates too. is straight through. through. He needs a runner. No support. Greg Morris goes oh. to bring him down and does right before the line. That's a great run from Bates. We've got Beto waiting at dummy half here, filling in the gap. He goes short side. Cut out ball. Here's Harlow. What's the front rower going to do? He's just going to pin the ears back and go for the line. The ball's up. It's been wrapped up. Can he get there? Jeez, he's close. He's very close. He's been close a lot there, Tim Harlow. And this is a very slow play of the ball. Tim will play it now. Block runner there. He's cut out. He finds Nathan Ward. He goes here. around. We've got Dave Taylor. Gives it out to Cody he's Warwick. There. And Cody Warwick is going to get there for Dungog and equal and put them in front. They've just flipped this match on its head, boys. That's a that's a that's a great result. 
Great result. Michael, that was not far away from you. How, what comment can you provide on that try? Oh, it's a great try. Just a one pass and he just heads straight for the line. The Dungog supporters are up on their feet, hands in the air, celebrating what a great try that was. Right in front of all the Dungog fans as well. So as we just saw on the replay there, Cody Warwick, excellent try. Really good work from Dave Taylor there too. The uh, young fella in the centres there just held that pass up beautifully, drew that last bloke in and uh, put it on a plate for his, uh, for his back row there. Lovely try. All that experience playing in the Super League. Yeah. And the Titans and the Rabbitohs and the Broncos. Great career, Dave Taylor. I wonder if he gets that joke much. <laughs> probably. I mean, he probably gets <laughs> I'd say it. he probably does, yeah. Yeah, I'd say I would as well. So, well, that, that just flipped things around. Speaking of, um, as I mentioned before, about our sound effect, what can you tell me about this? It's loading. There it is. What are we going to keep that one on cue for yeah, all these well, uh, well. knee slappers you keep throwing out, mate? Oh, me? <laughs> it's all you, mate. We had fun in the first game, but this is oof, let's take a step up. We have went from D-grade comedy to C-grade comedy. Next is ladies' league tag comedy. That'd be an interesting one. First ever league tag grand final in Newcastle. It's a nice strike, but unfortunately it just goes across the face. Tough conditions today for the kickers too. Like you say, that wind sort of swirling around, it'll drop and then it'll pick back up, so... Absolutely. I was here a couple of weeks ago in the uh, Tui's Cup semi-final. West Newcastle versus uh, Lakes. And the, it, the wind was just insane. So it's a, it's a bit similar today, except the wind seems to be a bit inconsistent. Sometimes it's howling and sometimes it just dies. And everyone from Carrington was on site at that kickoff, may I just add? So we've got Dungog bringing it back. Tim Harlow. Big run. A lot of experience in the Dungog forward pack. That's another slow play of the ball. I don't think Tim will be happy with that with John Tantalou. But hey, got to live with it. The blue headgear makes the second run. James Foote. James had a great Foote. game today. He's been Previous unreal. try two scorer. Good, two good Is tries. that she is making this run? That's a very good run. He's made to the 45 there. It wasn't she is. It was Nathan Ward. No, this is Nathan Ward now. Making an extra 10 metres. Plays the ball to Bates. Looks short side, but goes open. Finds Wes Nielsen. Nielsen gives it off to Shears. And Shears has met almost 30 out. Last tackle. What have we got in store for us? Here's Bader. He's Puts it high. high. Pressure on Greg Morris here. Takes He's it well, well with the fingertips. Great take in this conditions, Josh. Yeah, great catch there. And uh, he'll be looking. The outside backs are going to want to get in and do a bit of work now for, uh, for Carrington. Take the pressure off their forwards. Um, boys are doing a lot of work in the middle there, so they're going to be looking for the outside men to get in and uh, take the heat off. Evan Atchison just made a run out of dummy half, slipped over, and then <laughs> Dave Taylor just jumped on him like it was belly flop time for in a pool. <laughs> but I'm... No, nah, wasn't that funny. You can't do your own sound effects, Tom. He's saving now. Great fan. Saving is just full of line breaks. Oh, oh Joey Leilua. Oh. Kevin Atkinson is going in Look field. The pass. Probably the fastest bloke on the field. Can they get him? They're swarming him. And they bring him down. Jason Saban with one of the best flick passes you'll ever he see. He must be a Raiders fan. That is oh, and they've got the penalty too. They've got the penalty. Oh. That was. That is. That's for the highlight reels. That's Joey Leilua style there. He's just... Mate, that was better. Made the that initial was better break. Than Lewis. Trust that Ev Atchison is on the line, backing him up. Jeez, just if Atchison looked, just look for his support inside there, you could have been looking at a contender for try of the year. That was uh, that was serious he, stuff. Unfortunately, yeah, he lost his footing when he made that break and just hampered his running style a bit and slowed him down. But Carrington are looking good here. They could they could snatch the lead back if they play real smart here. Yeah, the momentum swung back their way after that. That's exactly right. Michael, the Carrington bench go off after that. Oh, yeah, yeah, they weren't too happy, but, yeah, they, they just got to live with it. <laughs> no, to Carrington, not Dunbar. Oh, <laughs> yeah, Carrington bench. So they got yeah, a long pass out there. Sorry, happy. Michael, I'll come back to you when we get the right team. But Ever Atchison plays it three metres in from touch. Go short side. Can he get That's there? A try. Looks good. That's a try. That's Matt Crossingham. Is that his second try for the day for a big front rower? It is. John Tanalu points to the spot. Michael, how's the Carrington bench? Oh, much excitement, especially with that flick pass and run down field. Everyone was on edge. They were really excited and they just relieved that they got another try and the grand final victory is even closer for the Pirates now. It's tit for tat. How's Matt Crossingham sees a chance on the short side. He's going up against the winger and with number 10 on his back, I think he liked his chances. So 
It's going to run over the top of you and plants the ball right in the corner. Very hard kick now for Warren Towers. It's just swinging around this game, isn't it? I can't really pick who's, uh, who's on top at the moment. It's, uh, it's a great game of footy. It's tip for tat. It's a, this, is, this is what you want on a grand final day. Like, if I was playing <laughs> off the bench on the wing, <laughs> I would prefer to win a grand final 14-12 than 50 nil. I'd just like to win a grand yeah. final, mate. I've never won one, so I, I'd take it. Yeah, I'd take I've never won mate. one either, mate. Well, I, I always lo I've lost two. Beggars can't be choosers. I've well, lost four. All for Central? Yeah, all for Central. Oh, mate. Well, it's as, unfortunate. As I mean, the best player here, I won an under-13s grand final, so... Oh, yeah, I'll just, I'll, just, I'll just butt in with all the crap that I've done over the years. <laughs> Let's not make this all about you, Michael. <laughs> this is about Carrington. This is right now, this is about Warren Towers kicking this goal from the sideline. Can he get it? That looks all right. It's coming across. Oh. Too much. The wind. The dreaded wind. Mr. I've won a grand final on the sideline. I feel like Nathan and Hindmarsh right now. <laughs> Actually, no, Josh feels like Nathan Hindmarsh. I didn't play enough games to be Nathan Hindmarsh. <laughs> I'd be more of an Ian Hindmarsh. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so a two-point ball game remains. However, Carrington get back on top. A nice take in the end goal. This is a hard Jeez, run. That's a big run. Oh, that's a great run. No stepping, no weaving, no stopping. Full speed, straight at the Dungog defence. As we've got a Shane Dixon out of dummy half, just taking the ball infield just to relieve that pressure of being so close to the sideline. So he's still got him back a good 10 metres too. Yeah, very, he's, very he's, good 10. He's seven. It's looking dangerous every run he makes and he's looking for that offload. But Dungog know he's going to throw that offload and just wrap that ball up straight away. Not allowing any second phase here as he plays the ball. We're going short side. Oh, That's a nice bump. little effective tackle break from Crossingham there. I wonder if he can get his third. It'd be interesting to see a hat trick in a grand final from a front rower. Here's Towers looking for a short ball. Goes himself. Pokes his nose through, but doesn't get there in the end. It's a good tackle wrapped up on halfway. Last tackle. What do they got? Here's, here's Greg Morris. Just puts a little dabbing kick there. It's eaten up by Nevin. And Nevin will make his way to the 30-meter line. That pitch, that looks hard, that pitch. Is the cricket pitch hard, Michael? Yeah, it's very hard when I walked on it earlier today. Mm, we're probably having to go over some dirty tactics or rubbing your face in it later. We've got three tackles done. And Dungog are playing it on, the, on their own 40. And they go to Wes Nielsen. Just makes a nice hit up there, just a few metres. Only the one point on Supercoach. We've got Bates with a cutout ball to... Hold. We've got numbers on the... Sh was that? That was Harlow. Okay, a couple of complaints there in that tackle from Dungog. And well, we'll live with it now. Here's Bates. Oh, he's found and a little error. Yeah, lost ball in the play yeah, the ball. Yeah, the there. play the ball wasn't clean. That's unfortunate. Big let off for Carrington, especially when they got this lead. Yeah, and Dungog would have they'd be disappointed with that. They would have been looking to finish that set off and uh, and try and build a little bit of pressure uh, down the Carrington end. Uh, so that's a bit of a let off there for uh, for Carrington. And Dungog will be, uh, they'll be looking to, uh, looking to do a, bit, uh, a little bit better next time, uh, next time around with the ball. Ooh. Coming in with that vicious arm then. Here's Chapman. Gives it to Seven. Seven shows it. <laughs> he's fallen for the dummy because you don't know what Seven's going to do here and he just bumps off a few and he's, he's finally just so brought down. He's dangerous on this edge. Every oh. time he gets the ball, he's looking, uh, something looks like it's going to happen. He's looking Michael, down up. there, keep watching Seven because, oh, he's coming off. Great shift. From <laughs> yeah, the big just going right. for a quick interchange here. Yeah, they Good want runs. to get him out there as soon as possible. Just get your breath back and have another go because you are doing a great job. Towers turns it on the inside. Oh, Greg Morris play. through the Oh, he's called it forward. Jeez, that was 50-50. I thought that was all right from That's where I'm 50 sitting. 50 from where we're sitting. We're a bit behind, but and we've oh, got a he's penalty. got a penalty. That's not what you want. That's what Dungog want, but it's not what Carrington want. That's a tough blow there. No pun intended. Just, uh, geez, yeah, that's, uh, you're compounding an error there just by, with back chat. That's, uh, again, the coach will be pulling his hair out, but... Um yeah, geez, the that pass is, looked all right to me, the, the oh, coach, I've got to say. ironically, was the one that threw the pass. It'll, uh, yeah, it could have been him that mouthed off to him, I'm not sure. So but would you uh, call it a coach killer? Or is yeah, it? yeah, yeah. 
But uh, ah, that pass looked all right from where I'm sitting, but anyway. Yeah, well. Sure, Dungog thought it was forward. I don't really know. I don't even know which pass they called forward. Another penalty here. Dungog have got a, a penalty from a high tackle. I think Carrington are just letting their discipline slip here, and it's not what you want, especially in a game like this. They're only up by two. There's still a quarter to go, so there's a lot more time than I initially expected, actually. So I'll kick for touch again. And they'll have the tap 25 out from the Carrington scoreline. Dungog will want to come away from here with points. Uh, two penalties have got them out of trouble. They've got some really, really good field position now. They'll, uh, they'll want to come away from here with some points yeah, for so sure. So Ward plays the ball to Bates. Bates gives it out to Brad Smith. Brad Smith, it looks like we've got a loose ball here. Got a knock on. Oh, no, we've got a stink going on. Everyone get in. Let's all run in for a bit of push and shove. And that's about it. Okay. Of course, there was the ball throwing incident. We always see that. As soon as the punches were outlawed, everyone starts throwing the ball at each other. Not a bad tactic. You ever do that, Josh? You ever throw nah, the ball at me, someone? Mate. Not me. Not tough enough. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like your referee's sending him off there, but I think he's just giving him a nice warning. And a very firm warning at that. I can imagine how firm that warning would be from referee Tanalu. Very angry. But smart choice here. I'm, I'm glad he's going with the scrum. Because I'm sure both teams are equally at fault there. And we'll just play what was going to happen. So both, both push and shove just cancelled each other out. There you go, Michael. A little maths uh, reference there for you. Very nice. I'm loving it. Of course you are. It's maths. As we've got Greg Morris showing it. Tries to get through. But it's brought down. He's wanting to get that line break that he got taken away from him before as Ev Atchison does the same thing. Good carry. He was a good carry. From a small guy, he does run the ball nice and hard. It's a nice flat ball there. We've got three tackles. So we've got a couple left. Harlow slow off that play the ball. We've got Chapman giving it short. It's Michael French with the ball now. He's out of dummy half. That's Watson. Goes himself. Good meters. That's good meters. A good dummy half does a, picks their runs nicely. Here's Warren Towers, the captain. Puts it low, but drills it. Finds the deck. It's a good bounce for Carrington. Bad for Dungog. He's got to pick it up near the sideline. Yeah, does well to surrender himself. Did well there not to get dragged into touch too. Very good work now as we've got uh, young Dave Taylor. Absolutely belted there. Great defense from, uh, from Carrington here. They're really aiming up. Oh, yeah. I bet he's glad he wore a headgear after that one. Oh. oh, whiplash. Nevin just swarmed by three Carrington Pirates. They're spreading it wide, trying to get the overlap. Oh, we've got a penalty. That's too high. Luke Ritz there taking the hit up and getting hit right in the cross the chin. Michael, the crowd blowing up after that. Yeah, the whole Pirates side weren't too happy with that. The crowd was a bit... Iffy, Happ iffy on that, but... Happened right in front of them, too. Yeah, it did. So, yeah, they weren't too happy with that call, as you can expect. Yes, I can expect. As we've got Harlow making another run. He's racked up a lot of metres today. I think he's be pushing 120. Metres, that is. Oh. oh, he's still going. That's a great run. Zach Thackeray. Making a great run in that headgear there. Goes short side. He finds Brad Smith. Brad Smith looks to pass but takes it himself. Maybe a bit of safety play there. Here's Bates. Gives it to Nevin. Nevin gives it to Thackeray. Thackeray goes straight and narrow. Straight and hard at that line. S possibly setting up for the next play. Bates from dummy half. Goes himself. Gives it short to Nevin. Nevin ducks his head. Goes for the Defense. line. Desperate defence there from Carrington. Yes, Very good stuff. Absolutely right, Josh. What can we do here? We're at the last tackle. Bates swarm. Gives it out. We've got Bader. Gives a little kick looking for a repeat set. Just Unfortunately, too heavy. we spoke about that in goal before, Michael. It just always seems to go dead. I think the breeze may have picked up. How's that breeze ha going? Yeah, the wind has picked up a little bit. Not as much as in the first game, but it still definitely has picked up. So ha have a look at the Carrington players. They're all out on their feet too. This is uh, uh -huh. going to be a big set here. So big set. Have not many passes. Maybe just one off the ruck here. Just whole set. Safety set. Is that what you call it? Yeah, something like that, mate. Just, uh, five scoots from half? <laughs> something like that. We've got Davey, Davey Taylor's holding his right shoulder there. 
Oh, that's not good. Bit of burp. I'll tell you what, they're playing with danger here. Dungog with these tackles up around the shoulders. Don't want it to go two inches higher. That's a, not a very good pass. Unfor uh, luckily, they had Michael French waiting there, or it might have been Dane Bell. Lucky he was waiting there, just having a bit of a breather, and he ended up picking up those crumbs. Big run there from Juden Nielsen. We got Watson wanting the ball from half. Gives it to Towers. Towers got inside runner. Looking for Morris on the chase here. See, yeah, Great that's take. A good catch. Great take. And the Dugmog winger did well then to defuse that bomb. He had a lot of pressure on him. Hard chase from Carrington. They used that set to build up their energy and they just managed to get a great chase on then. Oh, I'm imagining what they did because it was a good chase and they were out on their feet. That's good meters there too. It's a great meters from Lee Nevin. Looking for a penalty here. Waving his arms about, but not going to get one. That looks to be David Shears. It's hard to see the numbers. Gives it to Harlow. Flat ball to Harlow. Oh, he's called it forward. Ball pass. Well, I can tell you now, neither touch judge called that. It was a sole decision from the referee, Tanalu. So from his position, that ball must have looked... It was pretty flat. I thought it was flat. We were pretty in line with that one, but... Oof. Then again, I could rarely see the pass because uh, Timmy Harlow's body was in front of it. He's not small. He's not a small no, man. He's, he's definitely not small. Not someone I'd run at. What about you, Mr. Premiership down on the sideline? Oh, I'd run at anyone because under 13, Griffin, we, we're not scared. Under 13. Okay, Michael. <laughs> Excellent work, mate. Keep I'll, up the great work. I'll just chill on my sideline now. As Shane Dixon makes the first run. And we've got a... Scrum penalty. A differential nah, penalty no, no, here. No, I think that was a uh, lifting tackle. Oh, it's a lifting tackle. Yeah. Okay, well, then it's foul play. So Warren Towers looking around, assessing the situation and seeing how they're going to crack this Warriors defence. Watson looks for it out of dummy half. What are their options? I think it might be a settler. It is a settler from Owen Daniels. Another penalty to Carrington. I don't think a four-point lead is any better than a two-point lead, so no, I think they might just take the tap. For the try, yeah, they, they'll want to. They want to push for the try here. Maybe push out to a six or maybe yeah. an eight-point lead. An eight-point uh, lead could really hurt the Warriors at this point in the game. As we look at another run that's from a great Daniels. Carry. He's been very strong today. The lock forward, he very has been very strong. Very strong. Here's Watson. Goes short side. Got the runner, but just takes it back infield and just allowing them for a, a next opportunity play because that one sort of caved in on itself. Slow play the ball here. Watson appealing for a penalty. Goes open side. Here's Towers. Turns it back on the inside for Antilla. Best name again. Good work from the inside defenders there from Dungog. Not switching off and getting caught out by that inside ball back to the fullback too. Really good stuff there. Exactly Close to right. Line. Another slow play the ball here. They're really laying on him in this red zone. Here's Towers. Towers gives it to Chapman. Chapman spreads it out. Seven. Of course you're going to look for seven. I'd look for seven in this opportunity. Good defense again there. Warriors Chapman's doing a dummy well half look for here. a little dart. Gives it to Towers. Goes back in field, cross field bomb. It's well taken by Morris, looks for the offload. Gets it, tap on. We've got Shane Dixon with it. What can he do now? Ducks his head, great goes for the line, but is brought down That's on the great. last tackle. That's great defence from Dungog there. He's going to be a big set to get out, but really, really good scramble defence there from the boys. That's what you need to do in a grand final. Michael, you're down with a crowd member. What, can you give us a comment? Yeah, I'll just have a quick interview with the crowd member. So what team do you support? <laughs> oh, no, a bit, bit shy today. That's all right, mate. She's too constant, too much concentration on the game. She doesn't want to talk to you. You, sh you forgot to mention that you're a premiership winner. She might have got your autograph. <laughs> yeah, I know. Under thirteens, big competition. <laughs> and we got Hartlow with the ball again. Jeez, he's got through a ridiculous and a nice little today, second Hartlow. phase option there. And we got the offload now. He's got a big beard. We got Hamish Evans. Hamish Evans oh, is still well. going. The wingers have been making some really good meters in this game. Oh, he's Just still no, going. No one knows great how to tackle run. them. They're so small. Really good run great from run. Evans. Nearly earns himself a penalty. Goes short side. Looking for Dave Taylor. He was hit. He's gone into touch there. But I think they will get the result anyway. Evan Atchison has gone into touch. And again, throwing the ball. He does not like that. 
We've got a bit of a stink it's on this off the, the it's field. The, it's the wingers layering up too. Oh, it's the wingers. This will be interesting here. Seven. I hope Seven doesn't do any, anything silly. He's played an excellent game so far. It's just spilled off the field a bit. Luckily, we're not at our carry. Otherwise, that would have been in the crowd. Yeah. <laughs> so I think, if anything, I reckon it's going to be a dungog ball, whether it's a scrum or a penalty. I'm not too sure, but I can imagine it's going to, it's going to be a dungog ball. Josh, do you think any otherwise? Mate, no, I think uh, the way the refs have they've done, they've done a really good job today, keeping it in control. I think they probably don't really need to buy a penalty there. Maybe just a scrum for the original, uh, go back to the original decision, but uh, maybe just give the wingers a bit of a chat and to tell them to just sort of keep on their wing and maybe don't need to carry on like they are. So, Yep, you've called it, Josh. He's gone for the scrum. Now, I don't think anyone can complain with this scrum because in the end, Carrington did get taken out. Everyone knows that. And I didn't see any punches. I didn't see any foul play. No kicks, no punches, no headbutts, no... We did see throwing the ball, but we can let that slide. Yeah, so I was right there. There was nothing in it. Just a bit of shirt grabbing and that's No one is it. complaining about that call. No one from the crowd. So we'll just get on with things. Dungog have an excellent opportunity now to snatch the lead. So the ball's spread wide. We have Nevin giving it the... Is that... That's foot again. Foot going for his second try. Oh. The ball's come loose. How has this come loose? Jeez. You could, the there interesting could be, here. Could be claims of a Carrington hand there, but uh, maybe a loose carry as well. Dungog are claiming for a repeat set, saying that it was stripped one on one. However, I don't think they're going to get the chocolates here. I think it's going to be a Carrington scrum feed. Yeah, maybe just a loose carry there from Foot, who's been unbelievable today too. He's had a great game. Maybe just a bit of a loose carry there as he got on the outside. Um, yeah, probably the right decision there from the referee. Yeah, I'm happy with that. I think I'm happy. You happy with that, Mr. Premiership? Yeah, I'm very happy with that. You making friends with the crowd yet or not? Oh... Uh, Nah, they're a bit scared of me. A bit scared of you? Yeah, a bit I'm intimidated a bit scared of you. That's by why my... I sent you down to the sideline. Yeah, a bit intimidated by my premiership winnings. <laughs> uh, quiet. <laughs> when I need you, I'll call. I'll call you. Don't okay. call us. We'll call you. As we've got another penalty. An offside penalty. Carrington, get out of jail here. And we've got another 10 metres added onto this penalty. Another, mar another mouthing off incident. March them 10. The referee's showing consistency with this. Jacob Watson looking around for some runners. He finds one. Who is that? Anyway. There's some good runners here. Some fresh faces on the field at the moment for the Pirates. Bates looking for it at dummy half. That was crossing him. Here's Seven. Seven making... He's done a lot of running today, Seven. Short bursts of energy. Plays the ball. 52 out from their try line. Here's Towers. Long pass. Great ball. Out to... I thought that might have been Dixon, but it's, he's been replaced. I think that might be someone. Kane. Rorty. Ah. Kane Rorty's out playing in the centres. Oh, looking for the offload there. Doesn't get it. So they're right after halfway on the last tackle. I'm guessing a, I'm guessing a bomb here. Here's Towers. No, he's gone for the little kick. He's got Chapman on the chase. Can he get the bounce? Everyone's it's live missed ball. It. Everyone's missed <laughs> Everyone it. missed it. That's right. He's going to see if he can run around him as he's brought down by Kane Rorty, who's just entered the field late in this game. Dungog bringing the ball out now. They need to have some hard runs here. They need to get another try or another penalty right in front to level this game up. <laughs> exciting game today. I think we're heading got for a Bates good has made a good run. Bates looks to have a line break. He's got no runners. I think well, we're he heading, had... for a, heading for a good finish here, boys. We are heading for an are... excellent finish here, much like the first game. Harlow calls for the ball. Spreads it wide. Not a very good pass, but the catch made it look better. Last tackle. What is in store for us? Goes out himself. Bader. Number 15. Nathan Ward's put in the kick, and I tell you what, it's not a bad one as it's touched by Carrington. Greg Morris has got to get out. He does. Puts a left foot. A right foot on, sorry, oh, and he's geez, still he's going. Well. How's he going to get brought down? This is an excellent carry. Jeez, Greg Morris has finally brought down. That's great work what there What looked from to the be fullback. a line dropout has now turned into a play the ball for tackle one, 25 out. And that's great work from the fullback there. Really, really good speed, good feet. And, uh, yeah, he's done a very, very good job for his team there. Michael, any comments? Oh, saving. Oh, none at the moment. What about the front row of saving? Oh, he's had a stellar game. Can't fault him. Absolutely not. I can't fault him either. We've got the tackle there. 
They've got, I think they've got a couple up their sleeve and they've only got 40 metres to run. Here's Atchison. Goes for the nice stepping there, but he's brought down by Tim Harlow. He's finding a couple of tied forwards in the middle there too. Tim Harlow never thought he'd... Tim Harlow's down. I don't know whether this might be an injury, but he's not getting up. We'll go back to that later. As we've got the wingers, got some space. He's going to be brought down. Had some good space down the short side. Michael, can you see anything wrong with Tim Harlow? Oh, it just looks like a cramp at the moment, the way he's trying to stretch it out. He looked like he was unconscious, turned into a calf cramp. Anyway, as Dongoga bringing it out on the third play, we've got wrong team sheet. I think that's Luke Ritz. So that's Ward making a play for it. Showed his kicking skills. Great play the ball. That's a good play the ball. Here we've got Bates out of dummy half. Great work there from the uh, experienced hooker. That's a strip. He's got to call a strip there. It's interesting. We've got the touch judge going for the button. What's the decision going to be? Uh, that's, a, that's a strip, I think, against Carrington. Should be a Dungog ball. All right. So, John Tannell is just going to confer with Will Kirby here. Let's see if Will Kirby gets any Carrington friends out of this call. Be interesting. He's going to the spot where it happens. It's either a scrum or a penalty. Yeah. It's going to be a scrum. Dungog feet. Yeah, Dungog Good feet. decision. So what he's going to say is the ball was ripped out in a forward direction. Now, that's a smart decision because if he blows a penalty here, that is just pandemonium. So we've got five minutes left. Carrington 20, Dungog 18. A cracker of a game. Dungog making their way from fifth to get into this grand final. As we've got Luke Ritz making the first run. Cross field straight at the winger. Big man on little man, but he's finally brought down with the help of the... Other winger. Both wingers. Jeez, that, that last pass looked a bit flat there. Yeah, it looked a bit flat. We've got the touch judge in with the flag. I'm going to tell you now, it's not for the forward pass. Michael, did you see anything in that tackle? Yeah, I did. Just the number two from the blue side, Carrington. Carrington. It just a bit of a flop on towards the head area. So, yeah, unsure right. what the referee's going to call here. Okay, touch so judge gonna, saw it very clearly. So he's so. going to call out number two. That's Cody Pepperell here. So he's going to have a word with him. Now, we can't hear the referees, but we're imagining that Michael has just said that it is for a flop. And he think there might have been contact made to the head. So let's see the referee's signal. It's going to be a penalty. Looked like he ordered a try. Okay, so he's came in and made connect, connected with his forearm. So it's a bit of just dangerous contact there. Now, this is what you want if you're a Dungog player and fan. Well, we've got about five minutes left, I think. This is, we're setting up for a big finish here. We are setting up for a big finish. Hopefully, Carrington don't give away a penalty. So, Bates runs himself, goes through. He's through Bates, covering tackle, so great that, tackle. There's that experience we were talking about with that Bates is, before, oh, premiership absolutely. winner himself. Gives it wide. He's looking for the winger, but he's going to be brought. He's going to be lucky not to get taken into touch here. Let's see if he called. So the referee did not call held, so he's been entitled to take him into touch. And Carrington are going to get the ball at a scrum feed 10 metres out of their own line. Dungog will be disappointed with that. They, uh, that was a really, really good chance for him to just, if not come away with points, build a little bit of pressure. And, uh, yeah, they just, uh, yeah, that'll be disappointing. But uh, they'll see how, they, see how they can bounce back with this set now. Yeah, this is probably the first time I've heard the Dungog crowd go quiet. It's a very upset, upsetting moment for them. <laughs> It's getting warm up in the box here. Pulses are rising. Sweat is dripping. Here's Atchison coming out from the scrum. Puts his body on the line and smashes into the Warriors' defence. Here's Rorty taking a dumb... A, a dump. That's a touch footy play. <laughs> taking a run from dummy half. And makes a good 10 metres at that. Carrington shifter. Well, they're starting to move towards this scrum line here. They're shifting it wide and trying to get the outside backs from Dungog to break a sweat. Okay, Towers shifts it back on the inside. And we have Gareth Remage. We've got a Dungog player in back play on the ground. Trainer's looking for the referee to stop the game, but he's not going to do that because he's in back play. So they're going to spread it here. We've got numbers on the short side. Looks for the offload. And Dane Bell is brought down one metre in for the line. So the referee is finally going to call timeout. Yeah, he seems to be in a lot of pain here, Tom. He's around, he's hands on head, he's, he's feeling the pain. Looks like a, a knee injury on his right knee. Right, right knee, knee injury. Yeah, the trainer seems to be working it a bit. 
And the time is off. And we've got two minutes and 49 seconds left. We got, on reflection, I'm going to say we've got three minutes and 10 seconds left. I got my money back. I didn't win anything, but I got my money back because I got it on the second go. Setting up for a really good finish here to what's been a great oh. game of footy. These two teams absolutely throwing the kitchen sink at each other today. And uh, sink. I'd say there'll be some sore bodies tomorrow. There's been a, uh, a cracking game of footy and we're in for a good finish, boys. At your kitchen sink comment. <laughs> I feel like I should have heard that before, but I haven't. <laughs> Sounds like something that's... Mate, really that joke's as old as Timmy yeah, Harlow. <laughs> <laughs> he won't mind me saying that either, the big fella. He's had a great... He has, hasn't he? A lot of touches. be interesting to see if he, did he plays, if he played his junior footy at Dungog because it's a bit of a, a, a distance travel to go from playing for Lakes United last year and for the Dungog Warriors this year. Yeah, I'm not sure, mate. He... Uh... I'm not sure where Timmy Hale's from originally, but uh, no, he's a, he'd be handy. I'd rather be playing with him than against him. Absolutely, absolutely. So we've got time back on here. And Carrington making their way past halfway. And I think this might be tackle four. So they've got a couple up there. So no, it's tackle five. So Towers will be calling for the And he gets it. Sends it sky high. The ball Awkward swerving. Hard kick. for Nevin here. And Nevin spilled it. This could be he's play, on. play on. Evan Atchison is going to score ball game. under the sticks. I think he's going to go back for the knock on. We might have a double knock on. First one from Dungog, second one from Carrington the, here. The Carrington boys have gone off a little bit early there. They're, uh, we're going to go back for the oh. scrum. We've got two knock ons there. Absolute fizzer for what could have been an amazing try, but I think we might have got the right I decision. I think that's in the right end. call. I, I agree, Dungog mate. Are, are desperate to pack this scrum. They might get one more opportunity with the football, but we'll, we'll wait and see what happens in this set. Time off now. I think that's the right decision from the referee there. It's a, With it's a good call. 120 seconds remaining. AKA two minutes. That's a lot can happen in 120 seconds. I'd All say they probably they probably get a shot each. I'd say uh, Carrington will get a set and uh, and Dungog will get a, a set. They might have to go a long way, but we'll see what happens this set. Okay, so they've fed the scrum. Oh, Jeez, that's a great carry. Yeah, it's a great taste. Body on body there. As Morris wants it from dummy half, don't be expected to go. He looks to pass, but he would have passed it to the ref. Morris goes it himself, and he's brought down by his opposite number. Here's Bates. No, that's not Bates. That's Watson. Okay, so Towers taking up the dummy half position here. He gives it to a short ball. That's Dane Bell. He's looking for the line. He's doing his best to get there, but I think he's going to be held in an upright tackle. Watson. Towers. Looks wide. Puts in a grubber. Looking for Atchison. Oh, I think he might have jumped on it. Atchison. This could be a Who try. Who is it? Who has granted this ball? That is a big question. Jeez, I thought... The touch judge has not gone into the in goal, which signifies that he sees something wrong with it. I thought the Dungog player missed it. The Carrington player missed that, but I don't think the top... Or he might, he might give it. He could give it here. He's going to... He's going to talk to the other touchy, which is probably just Jeez, like coming uh, up and talking to us about this. Uh, <laughs> I, think, <laughs> I think, yeah. This is going to be a big call here. A we, big call. We are Carrington just... seem to think they've scored. The Dungog players are following the ref. They want to hear every word. Let's see what happens. He's going to, I'm tipping he's going to go point to the spot here. This could I think be the he ball might game. Do it. And it wasn't Evan He's Atchison. going back for a second shot. It was Owen, give it. Owen Daniels has scored the winning try for Carrington. That's the ball game. That is the ball game. And I think you will find that the C-grade champions for 2016 are the Carrington Pirates. And the, the, that, uh, that hill. That no. Hill on the, uh, it was it. And the it crowd was, oh. absolutely goes wild after that decision. It was the man with the name. Todd. Todd, Todd, Todd Antilla. <laughs> the man with the name, all right. He's also, he doesn't just have. First name, he's got a last name as well. Number 11, Todd, Todd Antilla. Todd Antilla. Todd Anteater. That's it. Antenna. Anything that starts with ant. Todd Antenna. Enchilada. Get your enchiladas at Guzman Y Gomez after this. I will. You better. 
You can talk about we've how got you no want ball. your premiership. We've got no ball for the conversion here, but I don't think it's uh, I don't think it's going to matter too much. You're giving Savin the conversion. Well, actually, no, probably not because I'm expecting Pirates to do a short a short kickoff here and just going hopefully for a miracle. And we've got the other ball just sailing in front of Warren Towers here. So he's just going to waste his time. Just going to take as much time as possible. We've got a lot of experience behind his belt here, Warren Towers, and have a lot of experience on it wrapped around his arm as well. So, boys, I'll tell you what, regardless of uh, whether he kicks this or not, this has been a cracker of a game. Absolutely great game. Really, really good grand final. Uh, both teams really, uh, really gave it to each other. Had everything. A few right. good tries, a bit of niggle. Uh, right, here we go. Here's the kick. And he's, he's missed, missed it. it. Dungog are going to spring kick off. Not much time left at all. Seconds remaining here. In fact, there was bugger all seconds. That's the game. Carrington Pirates, you are the 2016 C-grade Premiers. Congratulations. Any comments from the sideline? Yeah, there's a lot of despair over this Dungog side. The Carrington Pirates side, they're just celebrating. They're loving every moment of it. They've worked so hard all this season. The rewards have paid off. Dungog have done very well to get this far. Just got nicked at the final post. As we got the, the crowds coming on. The Carrington crowd. They want to be a part of this. Memories in the making. That's exactly right. <laughs> I feel like I've heard that somewhere. From Michael Armand right here. <laughs> Wow, we've had two games so far, and there's three remaining. The other three can be anything like this. We're going to have a great day. So once again, congratulations, Carrington Pirates, minor premiers, and now they are the major premiers of 2016. This could spell the end of their C-grade adventure and bump them up to B-grade for next year, but I don't think they'll mind. Whereas Dungog, finishing fifth place, you managed to get to the grand final, and you came within only six points. So you should go back to Dungog with your head held high and a 4X in your left hand. It was a serious game of footy. That was, that was great. Uh, went right down to the wire. Uh, you know, both teams, uh, both teams really sort of emptied the tank there, as, uh, as you expect to see on grand final day. But, uh, yeah, congratulations to Carrington. Definitely, definitely deserved winners. But uh, full credit to Dungog. They, uh, they gave him a hell of a... They pushed him all the way to the end. So, uh, yeah, great grand final. Really, really good grand final. All right, well... Next up, we got the Ladies League tag, but for now, once again, final time. Congratulations, Carrington Pirates. Thank you very much, Michael Armand on the sideline. No problems. And thanks, Josh, for joining me in the commentary mate, box. You did good. Thank you for having me. Thank you for having me. No worries, mate. Just, you're going to put me out of a job. <laughs> mate, thanks very much. Thanks, everyone.